Good evening and a welcome to Red Grange Field on the campus of Wheaton Warrenville South High School in Wheaton, Illinois as we get set to kick off the 2015 high school football season and we jump right in with a huge rivalry game as Wheaton North visits the Wheaton Warrenville South Tigers. Hello everybody, this is Chris Lake. Glad to be along for another year of Wheaton Warrenville South football. Tigers coming off of one of the more interesting football seasons in the last handful of years for the Tigers as expectations were high going into the year and then they found themselves one in four after five weeks. They then proceeded to win four games in a row and take a run all the way to the state quarterfinals before losing to eventual state champion Providence Catholic. A lot of the players from that team a year ago have moved on so a lot of new faces on offense and defense for the Tigers this year. For Wheat North they come off of a four and five season but one of the real highlights of the year last year for the Falcons was the play of then sophomore quarterback Luke Anthony threw for nearly 2,000 yards and 16 touchdowns last year and he had a big day against Wheaton South in the game on the north side of town a 30 to 9 Wheaton North win and in that game Anthony was 22 of 28 for 227 yards and three touchdowns so you know that some of the Tigers especially the coaching staff and defensive coordinator Mark Jackson have been licking their chops for another chance to get after the Falcons here to start the 2015 season obviously a completely different look in 2015 as we have the brand new DuPage Valley Conference to deal with as Wheaton South will welcome Nequa Valley, Wabonzi Valley, and Matia Valley to the DVC this year. So an interesting season, nine regular season games, eight of them will be conference games. The only non-conference game this year for Wheaton South will be on the road on the 16th of October when they will take on former DuPage Valley Conference foe West Chicago. For Wheaton North, I don't know that there's a team in the entire state of Illinois that's going to start with a harder schedule as they will open on the road against Wheaton Warrenville South and then next week have to head down I-55 to take on perennial powerhouse Joliet Catholic. So not an easy go right out of the gate for Wheaton North either. But a game that will set a tone for the start of this season for two teams. Again, next week no real easy test for Wheaton Warrenville South either as they will go on the road and take on a really good Lake Park team should be excellent on defense as they were last year so there are no easy games this year and it's going to be tough it was Joel Wardinsky in the preview in the Daily Herald who said you look at your schedule and oftentimes it's tough to find the five wins you're going to have to have in order to get into the state playoffs so it all starts tonight here throughout the state of Illinois as Wheaton Warrenville South plays host to the Wheaton North Falcons. Wheaton Warrenville South under head coach Ron Muhich, his 14th year, a record of 125 and 34 for coach Muhich in his time at Wheaton Warrenville South. He has been absolutely outstanding. We're going to go ahead and take a quick break here. We'll bring you tonight's national anthem. North. It'll be a good one. Two teams that are going to be going through some transition on their offensive lines. Wheaton Warrenville South does not return a single starter on their offensive line, while Wheaton North returns just one. So uh, it'll be a real battle up front. I think the real difference in this game tonight will be that young Wheaton North line facing off against one of the better defensive lines in the entire DuPage Valley Conference. As you look at Jack Buckholtz and Solomon Jackson up front. Buckholtz, six foot one, two hundred twenty-seven pound senior, third on the team last year with four sacks. And Solomon Jackson, six foot four, two hundred twenty-three pound senior, led the team with nine sacks. And so you're going to see a Wheat North team that's going to throw the ball a ton with junior quarterback Luke Anthony. So the bottom line will be if the Tigers can get to Anthony put him on the seat of his pants a couple of times and get him to have to throw on the run. A real good chance for the Tigers to be successful tonight. On the flip side, Wheaton South on offense coming off of one of the worst offensive years in recent memory. In fact, they averaged just 228 yards per game last year. That was the fewest yards per game in the Ron Muhich era and only 81 yards per game passing also the fewest in the Ron Muhich era. So it's going to be a bit of a transition on offense, and junior quarterback Michael Stebbins will be the man at the helm, 5'11", 155-pounder. But the real key is going to be the senior running back, J.J. Johnson. He had a great year last year, led the team with 725 rushing yards and eight touchdowns, averaged over five yards per carry, and he's going to be the bell cow for this Wheat Warrenville South Club this year as he is going to get the ball early and often. The other name to watch is going to be six foot four, 250-pound senior tight end Jalen Carter. He is a huge target. 
And it's going to be very interesting to see how Ron Muhich and the Tiger offense decides to use his huge frame. Saw a little bit in a scrimmage a week ago. They were lining him up in the slot, using him in the middle of the field, and then also running some screen passes to him. And he actually broke a play for over 60 yards and a touchdown in a scrimmage a week ago. So Jalen Carter, a name to watch so far this season. One of the things that will be interesting will be a little bit of a lack of depth at the wide receiver position. Expect to see Nick Howell get the ball. Expect to see Owen England, a running back by trade, split out as a receiver as well. But one of the guys that will be missing here in the early part of the season for at least week one will be Tyler Hamilton, six foot one, 175-pound senior, expected to be a big part of the offense this year. He has suffered a separated shoulder and is not going to play tonight. Could be back in the lineup as early as next week at Lake Park. Another injury in the early going for the Tigers is backup quarterback and kind of a slash player, a guy who could have seen some time as perhaps a slot receiver and maybe get the ball in the backfield as well, Matt Dosey, 185-pound junior. He's suffering from a leg injury and more than likely will not be available to the Tigers until the middle of this season. One other change here at Red Grange Field this year, which is going to take some getting used to for me, is that the scoreboard is now on the north side of the field, and it has always been on the south side of the field, and I have already found myself looking to my left or to the south five times already, trying to take a look at the scoreboard, but it is now to the right, to the north, as we watch play here atop the press box at Red Grange Field. Gorgeous new scoreboard, LED lighting, very, very easy to read. No more of those yellow bulbs. Much easier with the white LED lights to be able to read everything that you need as you watch the game here at Red Grange Field. Wheaton Warrenville South will kick off to start the ball game. They won the toss. They will defer until the second half, and they will kick to Wheaton North. Wheaton North in the road, white uniforms. That's white jerseys and white pants, blue lettering, white helmets with a blue stripe and the old-fashioned Falcon logo on the side. Wheaton Warrenville South in what has now become the the standard home black on black, black tops, black pants, orange piping. The numbers are actually black with orange trim around the side and that distinctive Wheaton Warrenville South helmet, orange with a black tiger paw on either side. And I already have made my first mistake of the 2015 season. It'll be Wheaton North kicking to Wheaton Warrenville South to start the ball game. It'll be from right to left doing the kicking. Will be Anthony Sawyer, 5'11 senior for Wheaton North. And three safeties back deep for Wheaton Warrenville South. J.J. Johnson is back deep. They will not give him a chance to get the ball as it is caught by one of the upbacks. And Wheaton Warrenville South going to start with great field position out to the 40-yard line. A good solid return as Owen England was able to take that kick around his own 20-yard line and move it up to the 39 where the Tigers will start first and 10. So junior quarterback Mike Stebbins, 5'11", 155-pounder, will come off the sideline. and get things started for the Tigers. Wayne Warrenville South, ball on the far side hash mark. They'll send three receivers right, one to the left. Stebbins is in the shotgun. J.J. Johnson on his left hip. Long count as Stebbins takes a look left and right. He'll hand it off to Johnson on the inside handoff. No, it's a fake. Stebbins keeps it himself on a little zone read play. Everybody's eyes on J.J. Johnson, including mine. And Stebbins able to dive forward out to the 44-yard line for a solid gain of five on first down. Ask any coach, and they'll tell you the opportunity to set the tone for a football game here on drive number one. And sometimes it's not about hitting a big play. Sometimes it's about driving the ball down the field and asserting a little dominance up front. Johnson in a slot as a receiver on the right side. Carter out wide right, along with Nick Howell. One receiver out to the left. Stebbins in the shotgun, England to his right. Low snap, throw comes out to the near side to J.J. Makes the catch, turns up field, sips a tackle at the 45, hit at the 47, but drives forward. And he'll get to the 48-yard line, just shy of first down yardage. Tackle made by Luke Bennett for Wheaton North. Third down and one coming up for the Tigers after a four-yard gain on the pass to Johnson. Much like Keyshawn Watson a year ago, the... The now Western Michigan football player. Tigers are going to do everything they can to get the hand, the ball into the hands of J.J. Johnson. They're going to pitch it to him. They're going to hand it to him. They're going to throw it to him because he is, without a doubt, the most dangerous weapon on offense. Stebbins back into the huddle. Play clock down to 10 as he breaks. Third down and one for the Tigers at their own 48-yard line. Three receivers left, one to the right. England is the back. Stebbins throws quick to the right side. It's incomplete. There was a mistake there. 
The pass was intended on the near side for Jesse Odom, but he looked as if he was going to block downfield as opposed to looking for the pass. Incomplete. Fourth and one, and the Tigers will punt. Last year, Wheaton Warrenville South, the worst third down conversion percentage since 2002 as they converted just 28% of their third downs, and they are 0 for 1 to start this season. Back to punt is Andrew Leonard. Back deep for the Falcons is Steele Graham. He will fair catch it at the 19-yard line. Excellent punt by Andrew Leonard. And Wheaton North will get its first possession inside its 20. First and 10 at the 19-yard line for the Falcons. We have 10 minutes, 11 seconds remaining in quarter number one. No score on opening night between Wheaton North and Wheaton Warrenville South. Ball right in the middle of the field. And we got our first chance to see the Falcons sophomore quarterback, Luke Anthony, 6'3", 200-pounder, certainly looks the part. He will start in the pistol. Has one back behind. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. Anthony will throw to the left side, a wobbler incomplete. Knocked down by Blaze Barista in coverage. Pass was intended for Marcus Gustafson. Six foot five, huge target for Wheaton North, but Blaze Barista gets the pass break up. It'll be second down and 10. Falcons come out of the huddle. Going to be a pretty similar formation look all night long. They're going to go two receivers right, two to the left. One back to the left of Anthony. That's Luke Nibella. Play fake, throw to the left side of Wobbler. Caught and immediately dropped is Gustafson and plays Barista there again. Back-to-back -back plays being made by the 160-pound senior. We talked about the relative inexperience in the secondary for Wheaton Warrenville South. Well, Barista has stepped up and made two plays right out of the gate. A loss of one on the pass play. And it'll be third down and 11 for Wheaton North. And I guarantee you, proud papa Bob Barista, president of the Tiger Paws Booster Club, chronicling it all on the sideline and doing a little hooting and hollering at himself. Third down and 11 for the Falcons. Big play here to be able to flip field position. Nidbala is behind Anthony, who's in the pistol. He's got three receivers in the formation. Drops straight back to throw. Now he's going to come up against pressure. Flag flies, directs a little traffic, throws to the right side, and it is caught near the first down marker. Nope, incomplete. Pass was intended on the far side for Adam Torini. As now an incomplete pass, but we'll wait to see what the flag says. Our white-hatted referee comes to the near side. It's a personal foul against the Tigers. And on third down, that personal foul will be an automatic first down for Wheaton North. So there's a huge penalty. Our first penalty of the ball game and what should have been a three and out for Wheaton North. Instead, we'll see the Falcons with a first and ten at their own 33-yard line after the personal foul. No indication from the officials what the personal foul was for as the flag was thrown in the middle of the line of scrimmage. So 9.25 left in the first quarter. Clock running. Falcons first possession. Wheaton Warrenville South punted to them after coming up empty on their first. Three receivers to the right, one to the left. Anthony's in the shotgun. Sends a receiver in motion. They will hand it off. And on the sweep to the right side, nowhere to go. Is stacked up and thrown down is Jack Bennett, who came across on the jet sweep. And Solomon Jackson was having none of it. First tackle of the year for the big senior. No gain on the play. It'll be a second down and 10 for Wheaton North. Ball on the far side, hash mark. It's a very slow developing play there. It's not a bad play because of the, all of the throwing that Wheaton North does, but Tigers did an excellent job of stringing it out. Adam Torini, receiver out wide to the right. Gustafson out wide to the left. Receiver in the slot, one back with Luke Anthony. Quick throw comes to the near side, pass is caught, and immediately down he goes. Blaze Barista again! Steele Graham makes the catch, but it's going to be a loss on the play as Blaze Barista now has a pass breakup and two tackles for a loss. 
And it's going to be a third down and 13 coming up for the ti- for the Falcons as the Tiger defense continues to stand. So welcome to some quality varsity time, Blaze Barista, as he has made every play that's come his way thus far. Third and 13 for the Falcons. Play clock down to 10. They have not broken the huddle yet. Now they come out with seven, six, five seconds on the play clock. They're going to have to hurry to get this off. Anthony still taking his time. One, and there it goes. That's going to be delay a game against Wheaton North as Anthony never picked up the play clock. And they've never been easier to read here at Red Grange Field. The LED clocks are right at the level that should be easy to see as you're a quarterback looking downfield. And what was a third and 13 will now become a third and 18 for Wheaton North. And that much tougher for the Falcons here. Gustafson out wide to the left. Three receivers spread out to the right side with Anthony and the shotgun. Junior takes a high snap, slips to the right side, pass is caught underneath. Steele Graham makes one move, spins, and down he goes as senior Tim Dalton wraps him up and throws him down. It'll be a gain of about seven on the play, not nearly enough for a first down. And just like the Tigers on their first possession, the Falcons will be forced to punt. Twin safeties back deep, the senior, J.J. Johnson, along with junior Luke Foster. Back to do the punting for Wheaton North. Also their place kicker, Anthony Sawyer. 5'11", 190-pound senior. An excellent kicker. He'll kick it away from about his own 20-yard line. He gets it away. High, tail-wagging punt. Fair catch called for and made uh, Johnson at the 35-yard line. And the Tigers will take over there. Down to 6.45 remaining in quarter one. Each team's out of possession. Neither team has scored. It's turned out to be an absolutely gorgeous night for football here in Wheaton. During the day, the threat of rain on and off, according to the National Weather Service, looks like the rain will hold off until about 11 or 12 o'clock tonight, so it should be an absolutely gorgeous night. This week one, you're so used to hot, miserable, humid conditions. This has got the feel of the end of September more than the end of August. Johnson and England are the backs on either side of Stebbins on first and ten. Motion across the formation from Jalen Carter. And now whistle blows, and we're going to have a procedure penalty, I believe, against Wheaton Warrenville South. Seeing a little bit of that ragged play that you expect to see week one, especially with a lot of new players in the lineup. It will indeed be an illegal procedure penalty. And now it'll be first and 15 for the Tigers as they move the ball back to the 30-yard line. I think we're going to see a lot of that motion action where they're going to have Jalen Carter lined up as a wing on one side. They're going to motion him across the formation and then use him like a fullback and try to run behind him. Tigers will change the formation here. Receiver goes out wide to the left. That's Michael Clutchy. Three more receivers on the right side with Stebbins in the shotgun. Inside handoff to J.J. He fakes it, but now whistles blow, and the play is dead. Again, that flag thrown at the line of scrimmage. It'll either be a legal procedure against the Tigers or offside against Wheaton North. And it'll be offside against Wheaton North. So the Tigers will get the five yards back that they lost on the illegal procedure penalty. And the first quarter here turning into a bit of a slog. 6.41 left, no score. Tigers and Falcons. So right back to where the possession began at the 35-yard line. First and 10 Tigers. Wheaton North defensively. For the most part showing a four-man front. They'll have five down lineman here, one of them is the linebacker on the right side of the formation. Two receivers right. Stebbins has a back on either side in the shotgun. Takes the snap, fakes the handoff to Johnson. It'll be Stebbins on the run, slips the tackle, spins down near the 43-yard line before being drilled down at the 44. Tackle made by Dave Taylor, senior DB for Wheaton North, but Stebbins a good read on that zone option. Held on to the football, plowed out to the 44-yard line. He picks up eight. It'll be second down and two. Ball on the near side. Hash mark. Tigers going left to right here in at quarter number one. Jalen Carter in the slot left side. Stebbins is going to bring Carter in motion across the formation. He has two backs with him. 
Low snap, Stebbins dribbles it, has to keep it himself, and he's going to be thrown down for a loss. Whole timing of the play screwed up, and Nick Namoff, 6'1", senior lineman, got in there and spun Stebbins down back at the 40-yard line. It'll be a loss of four on the play. It'll be third down and a long six for the Tigers. It's amazing how that one little hitch, that little bobble on the snap, it was just a shade low. Stebbins ended up putting it on the ground before picking it up through the entire timing of the playoff. And the next thing Mike knows, he's on his back looking up at the sky. So now third down and six and a half. They're going to bunch three receivers to the right are the Tigers. It'll be Carter, Howell, and Johnson. One receiver to the left as Stebbins will actually go under center with one back behind. Stebbins will play fake. Rolls to his right, looks to throw. Over the middle, it's tipped and almost intercepted. In and out of the hands of Carter, and it was almost picked off by Luke Bennett. As it is, the ball falls harmlessly to the turf. It'll be fourth down for the Tigers, and for the second consecutive possession, Wheaton Warrenville South will be forced to punt. Back to do the honors again will be Andrew Leonard. Single safety back deep for Wheaton North is Steele Graham. Snap back to Leonard is perfect, but then he drops it. Still has time and gets rid of it, but not a real great punt. It's going to bounce on the far side, but it does take a Tiger hop before going out of bounds around the Wheaton North 36-yard line. So the snap was perfect, but Leonard, a little bobble, put it on the turf, but was able to regain and get it away. But decent field position for North as they'll start at their own 36-yard line. 4.53 left here in quarter number one, no score. Wheaton Warrenville South has had the ball twice, two punts. Wheaton North has had it once, one punt, and they will start their second possession right here. Ball on the far side, hash mark. Anthony in the shotgun. Sends a receiver across the, motion, across the formation in motion. Instead, it's an inside handoff. Nate Bella gets the handoff, takes a couple of whacks, and ends up getting a couple of yards for his effort. Up off the bottom of the pile, Will Bach. 6'3", 230-pound senior, a name we expect to call an awful lot this year as this Tiger defense tries to replace the irreplaceable in Tommy Vitale, who was outstanding a year ago and is now plying his trade at Northwestern. Two receivers left, one to the right, a wing to the left side of the formation, pistol, short shotgun, if you will, for Anthony. Quick throw comes to the near side. Graham makes the catch, makes one man miss, gets to the corner, he's got a little room across midfield before being chopped down. And for the first time tonight, the Falcons get into Tiger territory. Tackle made by Blaze Barista, and he immediately goes to the bench here on the near side and seems to be holding his right side. So Barista has been really good here in the early going. Goes off to the sideline and will be tended to by the training staff. It'll be first and 10 for the Falcons at the Tiger 48 as we get to 4.08 left in the first quarter of a scoreless game. Graham and Torini to the right side of the formation. Now motioning across from right to left is Eric Muller. Handoff goes up the middle to Nidbala, and he's got nowhere to go. Down around his ankles, pulling him down is Solomon Jackson. No gain on the play. It'll be a second down and 10. Barista still being tended to here on the near sideline for the Tigers. Perhaps a rib. It's hard to see as they're working on him. Still has not taken his shoulder pads off or anything like that. So an already young and relatively thin secondary gets that much thinner as Blaze Barista off on the sideline. Sam Milnamau now on the far side playing one of the corners. Out of the pistol. Handoff goes up the middle. A little bit of running room this time for the Falcons as they plow inside the 45. As on the, count, on the carry is Nedbala. Gets it to the 44 of Wheaton Warrenville South. Need to get to the 38 of the Tigers for a first down to the Falcons, so a third down and six here. Running off the far sideline for Wheaton North is Matt Giles as he will bring in the play, replacing Eric Muller. Those are two defensive stars for Wheaton North that are having to see some time on offense here. Big third down and six here as the Falcons are in Tiger territory. Anthony sends a receiver in motion out wide to the right. 
fakes a handoff, throw to the right side, caught by Steele Graham, but he's chopped down short of the first down. The throw was a wobbler. Graham had to jump to catch it. And as soon as he made the grab, right on top of him from the secondary, were the Tigers and no chance to advance. Really nice play there made by Matt Simpalis, 6'1 senior. And it looks as if the Falcons will show punt here on fourth down and three, but the Tigers going to play kind of a punt safe here just in case there's a fake in the mix. Anthony Sawyer, the punter, has it. He'll boot it away from about midfield. Snap is a good one. He angles to the right side, the far side of the field. J.J. Johnson will make the call for the fair catch and squeezes it right at the 10-yard line. So an excellent job by Sawyer on the coffin corner punt. Johnson gets the grab, but a switch in field position. And Wheat Warrenville South will be starting deep in their own end from their own 10-yard line. 151 left here in the first quarter. No score in what has been a territorial battle thus far. And right now the advantage goes to Wheat North. Falcons have gotten the ball across midfield. Tigers have yet to do that. And they really have not been able to get J.J. Johnson into the flow. Leading rusher from a year ago with over 700 yards. Has just a couple of carries. Has one catch. But has just not been able to get started. We're going to go I formation here. Johnson the tail of the tandem as Stebbins is under center. Long count, turn hand, lead play right side. Bouncing into the corner is J.J. Johnson. He's got some room across the 15 to the 20, and he steps out of bounds just shy of the 25-yard line. There's what we're talking about. J.J. Johnson, good solid carry. He'll pick up 14 yards on first down. Best play of the night so far for the Tigers. And a first down gets them out from the shadow of their own goalpost. And it'll be first and 10 for the Tigers at their own 24. Just a good old-fashioned lead play there and a good job by this relatively inexperienced Tiger line to open up a hole and then J.J. a good read to bounce it outside, take it around the corner, and pick up 14. Two receivers right, one on the left for the Tigers here. Short shotgun for Stebbins. He'll hand it right back to J.J., tries the right side again, and this time he gets dumped for a loss. Eric Muller, star on that. Falcon defense makes a really nice play from his linebacker spot, and he spills Johnson for no gain. Clock running down to 125 in the first quarter of what has been a defensive struggle. Along with producer engineer Craig Dent and camera person Hopi Fulton, I'm Chris Lake. Glad to have you along here on the opening night of the 2015 high school football season. Hard to believe we are already here. I'm sure hard to believe for all these students that they're back in school already. Second down and 10 for the Tigers. Now whistle blows. Clock will stop. Looks like Wheaton Warrenville South will burn a timeout here. Play clock was into single digits, and that will be the case. So not sure Ron Muhich, the head coach for the Tigers, all that thrilled about it, but the timeout called. So two remaining for the Tigers here at half number one. 59 seconds left in the first quarter of a scoreless ballgame. So far, absolutely gorgeous night. Visitor stands, as you would expect, packed on the far side. Half of those stands occupied by Wheaton North students, all of them dressed in white here tonight at Red Grange Field. Of course, the student section for Wheaton Warrenville South, enormous as usual with everybody dressed in black. So it doesn't get much more contrast than that. With black on one side and white on the other in this crosstown rivalry. I think one of the things that makes this rivalry fun, and I think it's the same in any town, obviously, but most of these players, more than likely, have either played with or against one another their entire lives. They've played in the Wheaton Rams program here in town, an outstanding youth football program. But there's an awful lot of guys, even here tonight, you can see a lot of kids in their Rams jerseys watching this game, but some of them will be south and some of them will be north when it's all said and done. It just adds a little more flavor to the rivalry. Out of the timeout, second down and 10 for the Tigers from their own 24. Three receivers to the left, one to the right. Stebbins in the shotgun with a back to his right. Long count, Stebbins takes, drops, looking to his left, throws, and it is right down the middle and caught. The grab is made and across midfield for the first time are the Tigers. 
as J.J. Johnson lined up in that slot on the left side makes the grab for a big gainer to the 48-yard line. Into Falcon territory. A gain of 28 on the pitch and catch from Stebbins to Jackson. First and 10 Tigers from the Wheaton North 48. Clock running down to 40 seconds left in quarter number one. Out wide to the right, Ashton Jones, junior receiver. Slot right, Owen England. Tight to the right side, Jalen Carter. And one receiver out to the left, that's Nick Howell. Stebbins changing the play, looks left, throws to Howell, makes the catch on the slant. Howell spins his way down to the 35-yard line. Back-to-back -back completions for first downs for Stebbins as Nick Howell gets his first catch of the year. Down to the 35-yard line. A gain of 13, Tigers move the chains. And a good job by Stebbins. Saw something he liked in the line. Changed the play at the line of scrimmage and was able to go to the short side of the field and hit Howell on the slant. Carter, England, and Jones out wide to the right. Again, Howell by himself on the left. Johnson alongside Stebbins in the shotgun. Snap goes through Stebbins' hands. Scoops it up, and he will be spilled for a loss. There to make sure he couldn't get anywhere was Nick Namoff. But a huge mistake by Wheaton South there as Stebbins was unable to handle the snap. And the final play of quarter number one is going to be a huge loss for the Tigers. And it's going to set up a second and forever when we get ready to start quarter number two. So a switch of the sides and the second quarter will be underway in just a moment as we are scoreless after one quarter in the season opener between Wheaton North and Wheaton Warrenville South. Two teams at least in the mind of Edgy Tim, the high school reporter who writes for the Chicago Tribune as well as Comcast Sportsnet, two teams that he has ranked in the top 10 in Class 7A to start the year. He's got Wheaton Warrenville South, preseason number four in Class 7A, and Wheaton North, preseason number nine. So not a bad start to the season. Not only do you have a rivalry game, but obviously a huge game that will have gigantic bearing on how the DuPage Valley Conference shakes out this year and a battle of two teams that are expected by many to be a real player in the 7A playoffs as we move the season along. So if you needed any more storylines, there you go. Quick update from what we can see. Blaze Barista, who is being worked on on the sideline for the Tigers, back up, has his helmet on the sideline with the rest of the starting defense. So hopefully... Barista is able to shake off whatever the injury was and will be ready to go when the Tigers go back out on defense. Final play of the first quarter was a mishandled snap by Stebbins. Ends up being a loss of 13, so second down and 23 for the Tigers from the Wheaton North 48. Stebbins in the shotgun all by himself. He's got five receivers in the formation, three to the right, two to the left. Stebbins take the snap, looking to his left, throws, pass is caught, almost intercepted. Catch is made by Owen England, his first catch of the year. Nico Gabenko was reading that play all the way, dove, and almost had an interception for the Falcons. Instead, it'll be a gain of three on the pass play from Stebbins to England. It'll be sec excuse me, third down and 20 now for the Tigers. And Ron Muhich is a great coach. He's been doing it for a long time, but there are not a lot of plays in your playbook for third and 20. Wind a non-factor tonight. The American flag of the north end zone hanging limp. So we'll see if Stebbins gets a chance to maybe air it out here. Three receivers bunched to the right. Ashton Jones, the only receiver on the left side. Stebbins rolling to his right, looks to throw. Has time, lets it go. Catch is made on the far side. Jalen Carter reels it in, but well short of first down yardage. A gain of just four on the play. I think the idea there was to try to get that ball into Jalen's hands on the move, but the throw was just a little low. Carter had to slide down to get it. So no opportunity to advance. It'll be fourth down and long for Wheaton South, and they'll boot it away. Back to do the honors. Andrew Leonard. And back at his own 10-yard line, awaiting the punt. Steele Graham, the senior receiver for Wheaton North. Snapback is perfect. Leonard boots it away. High wobbler in the middle of the field. It'll bounce and take a tiger hop around the 15-yard line and be downed right there. Solomon Jackson on punt coverage because you know he doesn't do enough normally down there to put a big meat hook on it and down it 
at around the 17-yard line where Wheaton North will start first and 10. 10.26 remains here in half number one. No score. Wheaton North and Wheaton Warrenville South. They're going to move the football out to the 18-yard line where North will take over. Junior quarterback Luke Anthony trying to get this offense rolling. He'll send Gustafson out wide to the right. Graham and Torini out to the left. Handoff goes right up the middle to Nadebala, and he's got nowhere to go. He'll lean out for a couple of yards. Making the tackle in the middle, Gabe Barraza, six foot tall, 206 pound senior. Second down and eight for North. Because of the relative lack of action in this game so far, it's actually surprisingly quiet. <laughs> I'm two receivers bunched to the right. That's Graham and Gustafson. Two more spread out wide to the left. Now across comes Graham. They will give it to him on an inside handoff. He tries to get to the corner, minces his steps, and then he's met by a host of Tigers and driven down after just a couple of yards. Excellent job of stringing that play out by the Tigers. And finally over there to make the stop was Barraza. Also there in support was Blaze Barista, so good to see the senior DB back on the field after being felled by an injury a little earlier. Graham was looking for that opportunity to turn that play up, but the defensive line for the Tigers did an, and the linebackers as well did an excellent job of just stringing it out, stringing it out to the sideline, and finally Graham just had to bite the bullet and dive forward for a couple. Third down and four for Wheaton North from their own 24. Anthony will hand it up the middle to Nidbala, and he is going to have the first down yardage. Everybody in the yard thinking of a throw there. But Nidbala able to plow forward and pick up the first down as he's dragged down from behind by Will Bach. So a team that is known for throwing it runs it three straight times and moves the chains. 8.45 left in the first half of a scoreless football game. Slot right side, Matt Giles. Gustafson out wide to the right. High snap, handoff goes up the middle, and not a lot of room. Nidbala again, and this time hit and dropped by Drew Polzis. 5'11", Jr. came up from the secondary and laid a good whack on him. Gain of just two. It'll be a second down and eight. Well, with the relatively inexperienced offensive lines, no returning starters for Wheaton Warrenville South, just one returning starter on the offensive line for Wheaton North, perhaps we expected a defensive battle, and that's what we're getting so far. Giles in motion from left to right. Stops in the slot on the right side. A little slip screen goes to Graham. He's got nowhere to go. Well read by the Tigers. Just not a lot of room. Solomon Jackson in there to make sure it didn't go anywhere. Also on the stop, Paul Monaco, 5'11", senior linebacker. Gain of just a couple. To this point, Wheaton North certainly not tricking the Wheaton Warrenville South defense. A third down and six coming up here. So well disciplined on the defensive side so far, which you would expect. Mark Jackson, the defensive coordinator for the Tigers, is all about assignment football, and so far the Tigers have risen to the task. Now a little noise on a third down and long. Wheaton Warrenville South fans making some noise. Giles goes in motion, sets on the left side. He'll be the third receiver on that side of the formation. Now the whistle blows, and we have a procedure penalty. A delay of game penalty again. Second delay of game penalty so far tonight against Wheaton North. And what was going to be tough at 3rd and 6 just got a whole lot tougher at 3rd and 11. Ball placed back at the 33-yard line. Ball right in the middle of the field. Wheaton North going left to right in the road white uniforms here in quarter number 2. Wheaton Warrenville South in the home blacks going right to left. Look for a big play here. See if the Tigers can't get a turnover on a 3rd and long. Pistol formation. Nidbala behind Anthony. Three receivers bunched to the right, one to the left. Stepping straight back to throw. Anthony under pressure, rolling to his right. He gets it away to the near side, and it is incomplete. Anthony had to get rid of it in a hurry as Solomon Jackson's big footsteps 
were pounding behind him. And he threw too high to the near side. The pass was intended for Gustafson. He's six foot five. If he can't catch it, nobody can. Incomplete on third and 11. And another punt coming up for Wheaton North. A lot of action for the punters here in the early going. We're inside seven minutes remaining in the first half. Wheaton North zero, Wheaton Warrenville South zero. Foster and Jackson, the two safeties back deep for Wheaton Warrenville South. Low snap, Sawyer's got it, gets it away under pressure, but gets away a beauty. Jackson will make the catch at his own 37-yard line, a fair catch. And that's where the Tigers will start first and 10. Look for a minute like that might be tough for Anthony Sawyer. He went down and got it and got off a butte. And to this point, Wheaton North has accomplished one of its major goals on special teams, which is do not let J.J. Johnson return the football. So the Tigers come off the near sideline with a couple of last-minute instructions from head coach and offensive coordinator Ron Muhich. First and 10 for the Tigers at their own 39, decent field position. Nick Howell goes out wide to the right. Jalen Carter's in the slot on the right side. Backs on either side of Stebbins in the shotgun. England on the right. Johnson on the left. Stebbins surveys the defense. He'll send Carter in motion. Snap back. Handoff goes to England up the middle with room. He's going to get just shy of midfield. Tripped up by Keegan Connor, senior DB for North, but a nice run up the middle for Owen England. As he'll pick up eight on that burst, it'll be second down and two. And now here's the opportunity. We have not seen the Tigers in a second short. And this is where the playbook opens up for Ron Muhich. Let's see if he tries to take a shot downfield here. Howell out to the right. Carter in the slot on the right. Same formation as the last play. England and Johnson are the backs on either side of Stebbins. Second down and one. He brings Carter in motion across. Stebbins. Play fake. Gives it to England again. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. First down, Tigers. Into Falcon territory. Owen England, two hands on the football to protect it. He plows forward and picks up a first down. Got eight on the first one. Picked up five more there. And for the second consecutive drive, Wheaton Warrenville South into Wheaton North territory. First and ten. remaining in the first half. Tigers trying to break this scoreless tie. Third straight play with the exact same formation. And again, Carter will go short motion to the right side. And Stebbins this time will give it to J.J. Johnson, and he's got nowhere to go. Helmet put on him early. Two Falcons there. Giles leading the charge, along with Nick Namhoff, who have been two names we've told a lot here in the early going for Wheaton North. No gain for Johnson. It'll be a second down and 10 for the Tigers at the 48-yard line of Wheaton North. Ball right in the middle of the field, right on the Tiger paw in the center of the field here at Red Grange Field. And again, this two student section start to get a little riled up as the Tigers come out of the huddle with 10 on the play clock. Little change in formation here. Luke Foster is a wing on the left side. Carter in the slot on the right. Now the whistle blows, and it looks like we're going to have a timeout called. And a very unhappy Ron Muhich is going to walk all the way out inside the numbers and have a word with his offense. It looked like the junior, Luke Foster, may be a little bit confused either on the play call or his position on it. And uh, a little conversation going on right now. So the Tigers use their second timeout, have only one remaining here in the first half. Exactly five minutes to go here in the second quarter. No score. Wheaton North and Wheaton Warrenville South. Tough deal for Luke Foster if you think about it because he's got his own coach here who's obviously going to yell at him if he makes a mistake. Then he goes home, and his dad is the head football coach at the College of DuPage who I'm sure is probably going to yell at him again. So I don't think it's going to be a real good bargain. It'll be up to Mom Christine to make sure that the heat is taken off of Luke when he gets home. Fosters are good folks. They actually had the good fortune to coach Luke's little sister Ashley in softball over the last handful of years. Also a good athlete in her own right. Luke broke off a long touchdown run in the scrimmage a week ago. Really showed some shiftiness. He's not a real big guy. 
at 5'7", 161 pounds, but has shown some elusiveness. And obviously, Ron Muich has trusted him to be one of the two safeties back on punts. And here he is on the field, uh, you know, plays that matter. Second down and 10 here for the Tigers out of the timeout from the 48-yard line. And again, it'll still be Foster in the wing on the left side. Now he's got a motion across, wing on the right. Nick Howells, the receiver out wide to the right. England and Johnson, the backs. As now Foster shuffles. Stebbins will turn. Play fake. Looks to throw. Down the middle. A little bit of a wobbler. Pass is intended for Jalen Carter. And he was tackled in pass coverage and pass interference coming up. George Roskuska had no chance of guarding Jalen Carter one-on-one. -on -one. Roskuska is 5'7". Jalen Carter is six foot four. That is what we like to call a mismatch. Pass interference. Move the football down to the 33-yard line on the 15-yard penalty. And now the Tigers are in business. First and 10. Moving their way into Falcon territory. Clock stopped after the penalty at 4 minutes, 53 seconds. Play clock has not started, so in the huddle, all kinds of time for Stebbins. He sends Howell out wide to the right. J.J. Johnson in the slot right. Tight end on the right side of the formation is Carter. Out to the left is Jesse Odom. Stebbins is in the shotgun with Owen England to his right. Long count from Stebbins. Has the snap go right through his hands. Going out toward midfield. He will pick it up and down he goes back at his own 45-yard line. And a flag flies at the end of the play. And the Tigers may catch a huge break here as there may be an unnecessary roughness penalty on the Falcons. Some loud booing from the far sideline. That's the Wheaton North fan base. But just like all other levels of football, they are going to protect the quarterback when they can. And the call is going to be a dead ball personal foul. A get hit to the head against Wheaton North. Now the interesting thing here is it will move the ball 15 yards and it will be an automatic first down for the Tigers. However, they're at the 40-yard line because of the long loss. Because it was a dead ball foul, it's actually from the end of the play, which was back to the Tiger 45. 15 yards moves it to the Wheaton North 40. And actually, they have not reset the down. Is it not an automatic first down? As it is, they currently have it at second down and 16 for the Tigers after the call. Two receivers right, one left. Stebbins in the shotgun again. Takes the snap, fakes to England. Rolling to his right, looking to throw. Under pressure, lets it go deep down the right side. And a diving attempt, but unable to grab it. On the far sideline is J.J. Johnson. Coverage on the far side for Wheaton North by Dave Taylor. Pretty good throw by Stebbins there. Have to try to get a clarification here on the down. The down marker on the far side said second down when the ball was snapped while the scoreboard said first down. So there's some question here about what the down should be. And it looks as if there was a penalty on the play against Wheaton Warrenville South, an illegal chop block, and that'll move the ball back to the 44-yard line of the Tigers. So we're going back and forth here with <laughs> penalties and large losses, and so... Somebody's going to have to give me a double check here. Still says second down, so that play ostensibly never happened. The Tigers have to get all the way to the 24-yard line of Wheaton North to get a first down. So, quick math. Second down and 30? Sound right? It's never very good at math to begin with. Three receivers right, one to the left. Stebbins, inside handoff to Johnson. He'll fall forward to the 45-yard line for a gain of one. Good job by the Wheaton North defensive front there. Joe Sheehan, 5'9", senior, down around Johnson's legs and would not let him plow any further. So a gain of one. So third down and 30-ish. 
Again, not a whole lot of plays in the playbook for this one. What you don't want to do here is turn the football over. Carter, Howell, and Johnson on the right. Five receivers in the formation total. Stebbins under pressure, rolling away, throws down the middle, and it's caught! Catch made in the middle of the field, Jalen Carter, just shy of the first down. Stebbins, an excellent play to scramble away from pressure, but there is a flag down on the far sideline at the 45-yard line. It may all be for naught. Illegal shift against the Tigers. Wave it off, and we'll go back to a third and 35. The Tigers are going the wrong way. Too bad. Excellent improvisation from Stebbins. He saw pressure up the middle, rolled to his left, actually was able to break out of what would have been an arm tackle, and whipped it down the middle. And I'll tell you right now, that's a play I think we're going to see a lot. When all else fails, throw it up for Jalen Carter. Big six foot four target, strong to the football. Excellent grab there, but unfortunately, it will be just in our memories as that one gets wiped out by penalty. Officially on the scoreboard, they have it third and 36. Under three minutes and 30 seconds left in the first half of a scoreless football game. Three receivers on the left side, Carter, Johnson, and Howell. One receiver out to the right, that's Odom. England is the back beside Stebbins in the shotgun. Low snap, Stebbins mishandles again. Under pressure, he'll wing down the middle again. And that one is fought for and knocked away. Intended for Nick Howell. And a pretty good play by Matt Giles as Howell and Giles were hand fighting. Howell turned for the football. Giles was a little bit late. Was able to get a hand in there and just pry the ball out of Howell's hands. Incomplete. Fourth and half of DuPage County here for the Tigers. And they'll be forced to punt. Steele Graham back to receive it. And Andrew Leonard will do the kicking. Graham standing back at his own 22-yard line awaiting the boot. Snapback is perfect. Leonard gets his left foot into it. Wobbler, middle of the field. Graham comes up, dives to make the catch at the 32-yard line. Down there in kick coverage was Sam Milnamau. Just in case Graham mishandled it, he'd have been right there to scoop it up. As it is, still Graham hangs on to it, and North will take over first and 10 at its own 32-yard line. 2.58 left in a scoreless first half. A defensive struggle. Neither team has been inside the other team's 30-yard line yet. Two receivers right, one to the left, one wing on the left. Handoff goes up the middle, nowhere to go. Flag at the end of the play. As the ball carried by Cullen Heimberger, his first carry of the night. Solomon Jackson squashed him immediately. But there's going to be a face mask call against the Tigers on the tackle. A five-yard penalty. And it will make it first and five after the play. Actually, not quite. From the end of the play, which would have been a loss, they put the football to the 35-yard line. So... It's first and seven. Heimberger behind Luke Anthony in the pistol. Right-hander looks to throw over the middle. Pass is tipped and incomplete. And now flag comes in. And they're going to go pass interference on Blaze Barista. Barista thought he got the timing on that pretty good with the pass intended for Adam Torini. But they're going to say that while Blaze tipped the ball with the right hand that he had the left hand on the receiver's hip. And pass interference will be the call. It'll be a first down for Wheaton North as they'll move into Wheaton-Warrenville South Territory. Coverage was good, but perhaps just a little bit too much hand from Barista. Football goes right to the midfield stripe. First and ten for the Falcons. Gustafson out wide to the right. Three receivers bunched to the left. Heimberger behind Anthony. Snap is low. Anthony under pressure. Throws to the left side. Dropped. Trying to sling it out to Heimberger out of the backfield. 
Jack Buckholz put some pressure on Anthony, which I think sped that play up a little bit, and the ball got to Heimberger a little earlier than he was expecting. Heimberger catches it. It's probably a big gain, but instead a drop makes it second down and 10. Clock stops with 2.41 left in the first half after the incompletion. And now the whistle blows. And it looks like they're going to stop Sam Milnemau here on the near side dealing with a shoe. There we go. Got it taken care of. All tightened up, and we will proceed. Gustafson and Giles out wide to the right. Graham and Torini to the left. Heimberger is the back to the right of Luke Anthony. Graham comes in motion across. They fake the handoff. Now against pressure. On the run is Anthony to the 45. Runs over a man inside the 40. And it'll be a first down for Wheaton North. Luke Anthony not known as a runner. And right there he dipped his shoulder and ran over Jonathan Larson. And that gets the Wheaton North sideline a little fired up. First and 10 for the Falcons at the 38 of the Tigers. In motion comes Torini. They hand it off to him on the jet sweep. Trying to get to the near side and he'll be knocked down just inside the 35-yard line. Tim Dalton there on the stop. Milnamau comes off the bottom of the pile as well. Pretty solid gain on first down, however, for the Falcons. Down to the 33-yard line. Gain of five. It'll be second and five. Clock running with two minutes left in the half. Falcons are speeding it up. Anthony takes the handoff, or the snap, goes left side to Graham. Graham slips the tackle inside the 30. And ball pops out. Tigers say they recovered. No signal from the officials yet. They'll now stop the clock. A flag flies late. Tigers come out with the football. Blaze Barista's got it in his right hand. We got no signal from the officials yet. And we still have to sort out the flag. The catch was made by Torini. Now they're going to say that he fumbled it. The Tigers will get the football. And let's see what the flag is at the end of the play. So there's the first turnover of the ball game as Blaze Barista's big night continues as he will get a fumble recovery. The flag is a dead ball personal foul against the Tigers. That was after the recovery. So they'll move the football back. So it'll be terrible field position for the Tigers. But the good news is, is they take the football away after Wheaton North was driving. Falcons had their best drive of the game going, but Torini coughs it up. Blaze Barista recovers. And after the penalty, the Tigers will have it first and 10 at their own 13-yard line with 150 left in the first half. Stebbins will line up the Tigers in the eye. Receiver to the left, to the left, receiver to the right. And the eye back, J.J. Johnson. Stebbins fakes the handoff, keeps it himself, bounces to the left side, has some room. Puts his head down out across the 20. And he'll be close to first down yardage. Spilled at the end of the play by Eric Mueller. It will be a first down for the Tigers out to the 23-yard line. Now they'll open up. Three receivers to the right, one to the left. Stebbins back of the shotgun. Owen England on his right side. Stebbins rolling right, looking to throw. Hit from behind as he lets it go. Pressure came from the backside by Joe Sheehan. A flag is down at the 20-yard line, right at the line of scrimmage, as it were. One on either side, in fact. So you wonder if perhaps a Falcon lined up off sides. However, they are talking to the Wheaton North defense, so it looks like that foul is going to be against Wheaton Warrenville South. Illegal procedure, or excuse me, an illegal shift against Wheaton Warrenville South. Back it up five more yards. And again, I apologize. On the previous play, the scoreboard had given the Tigers a first down, but it was actually second down and one after the Stebbins run. So instead, it was a nine-yard gain. Now a five-yard penalty makes it second down and six for the Tigers from their own 18. 121 left in the first half. No score. Wheaton Warrenville South and Wheaton North. Stebbins back under center, eye formation again. Only one, rece excuse me, one receiver on either side of the formation. J.J. Johnson, the tailback. 
He'll get the handoff off the left side. He's got some room across the 20, 25, 30. Slips the tackle, 35, and dives out across the 40. That's the burst we are used to seeing from J.J. Johnson as he picks up 22 on the run off the left side. First and 10 Tigers at their own 40 with 114 left. And now the whistles blow, the clock stops, and Wheaton North calls a timeout. That's a good break for Wheaton Warrenville South. Falcons not ready on defense, and with the Tigers only one timeout remaining, they will take this extra breather courtesy of Wheaton North. Well, that's the J.J. Johnson that we came to expect last year. Just a slasher. He was able to get a nice hole off the left side, and then when he sees daylight, it's about a step and a half to full speed, and he was shrieking down the left side, and a Wheat North player just barely got a piece of his leg, or else that may have been down the sideline and gone. So again, this has been a real battle. Neither offense has been able to get inside the other team's 30-yard line. Wearing out the turf in the middle of the field here in the first half. It'll be interesting to see just how aggressive the Tigers get here. Decent field position at the 40, their own. 112 left, one timeout. Seems to me there are times that you would just go ahead and maybe run it out here and be happy to go to the locker room tied at zero. There are other times that I think you see an opportunity. Right now, I think... And I don't know. I'm going to guess. I think Ron Muhich sees an opportunity here. They're going to stay in the eye formation, but I would not be surprised if they go ahead and try to go up top out of the eye here. Johnson is the tail of the tandem. Out wide to the right is Ashton Jones. Nick Howell here on the near side split out for the Tigers. Stevens a long count. Turns. Play fake to Johnson. Rolls left, looking. Throws. Patch is caught on the near side. Nice grab by Nick Howell, the sure-handed senior receiver. Move the chains. First down, Tigers at the 47 of Wheaton North. So out of what has been a predominantly run formation for the Tigers tonight, Stebbins fires a strike to Nick Howell, who makes the catch on the near side. Like what I've seen from Nick Howell so far tonight. Some underneath routes right there, a really well-run out route, and he'll stay the receiver on their left. And again, out wide to the right, Ashton Jones, who can fly. Eye back is Owen England this time. And they go to an option handoff, and it is blown up, and it'll be a loss for the Tigers. Great play up front. Now some extracurricular activity at the end of the play as now a timeout will be called by Wheat Warrenville South. That play blown up in the middle. Dan Weber, 6'2", 195-pound senior, one of the five returning Defensive starters for Wheaton North blew that play up from the get-go. As that's a loss of four on first down, it'll be a second down and 14 coming up for the Tigers out of the timeout with exactly one minute remaining in the first half. Zero, zero. And just because it's scoreless, I wouldn't say it's been boring. There's been some plays on either side. Tigers have the game's only turnover. Wheaton North driving on their last possession. And a fumble by Adam Torini at the end of a reception recovered by Blaze Barista. Tigers then a couple of big runs and a nice pass from Stebbins to Howell. Got across midfield, but an excellent defensive play by North. Uh, the most recent running play by the Tigers has pushed Wheat Warrenville Seth back to its side of midfield. So Ron Muhich has the offense huddled around him here on the near side right at the numbers at the 45-yard line and gives his final instructions and out come the Tigers on offense. Stebbins will go back into the shotgun. Jones goes out wide to the right. Two receivers on the left side are Johnson and Howell. Shotgun for Stebbins, Owen England on his left. Jalen Carter is the tight end on the right side of the formation. Watch for him Stebbins drops back to throw, looking to the right, fires it down. It's off the fingertips of Ashton Jones. Jones can fly. There's some question about his hands. That was a pretty good throw from Stebbins, and Jones just couldn't reel it in. It'll be third down and long. A huge crowd here at Wheat Warrenville South.
standing room only, quite literally, as folks are ringing the field on either side to try to get a glimpse of this one tonight. The Battle of Wheaton, opening night, DuPage Valley Conference opener. Doesn't get a whole lot better than this if you're into the Friday Night Lights thing. 55 seconds left in the first half, 0-0. Third down and 14 for the Tigers at their own 49. Howell to the left. Carter, Jones, and Johnson will be a bunch of three receivers on the right side. England to the left of Stebbins in the shotgun. Takes a low snap, looking to his left. Slings that out of the backfield to Owens. Makes the catch across midfield. Dives forward as he's out of bounds. They'll give him credit to the 46-yard line of Wheaton North. Clock stops with 49 seconds left in the half as he's out of bounds. And the Tigers will send on the punt team. Good safe play here. You do not want to turn the ball over on downs near midfield. Andrew Leonard gets set to punt it. Steele Graham back now as the snap is made. Whistle blows. Flag flies. I think this might be delay a game against the Tigers. The flag was thrown by the back judge. And usually his one job is to keep an eye on that play clock. We will await the official signal. Nope. Illegal substitution against Wheaton North. Well, that will now make it interesting. Instead of fourth down and nine, it'll be about fourth down and four. But no change from Ron Muhich here on the near sideline. Tigers out of timeouts. It will still be a punt. Leonard, high snap. He's able to corral it. Boots it away with the left foot. High wobbler in the middle of the field. Ball bounces. It's going to be a penalty here against Wheat Warrenville South. The ball will roll dead inside the five-yard line. But one of the kick coverage men, looked like it might have been Tim Dalton, ran into Steele Graham, the receiver, as he was coming up on the punt. And so it will be kick-catch interference. Easy for me to say. Kick-catch interference on Tim Dalton. And so instead of being inside the five-yard line, the Falcons will have decent field position, but with just 38 seconds left in the half and two timeouts. 0-0 zero, zero your score. And what has been a very interesting first half, I don't think anybody would have been terribly surprised that the Wheat Warrenville South offense might struggle a little bit with all of the new faces. I think it's interesting that Wheaton North quarterback... Luke Anthony, who was outstanding last year, throwing for nearly 2,000 yards, threw for over 200 yards against Wheaton Warrenville South a year ago, really has not been able to get into much of a groove so far tonight. Officials still trying to sort out where to spot the ball on this kick-catch interference call against the Tigers' Tim Dalton. And they're going to march it off from where the ball ended, which was the four-yard line. It's a 15-yard penalty, so it should get out to the 19. They had just asked me. I could have told them that. It'll be first and 10 for... It's easy to say from up here. We First and 10 for Wheaton North at their own 19-yard line. Let's see how aggressive head coach Joe Wardinsky decides to be here. Three receivers left, one to the right. Anthony back to throw. Under pressure, steps up in the pocket. Rolling to his right, lets it go. Passes in and out of the hands of Gustafson. He was open here on the near side. Will Bach had the coverage, but I think Gustafson was thinking about turning that upfield before he had complete control. Juggled it and dropped it. So the six foot five senior can't reel it in. It'll be second down and 10 as the clock down to 31 seconds remaining in half number one. Absolutely gorgeous night. Temperature probably in the mid 60s right now. A little more humid than it's been this week as the storms are coming overnight. Had a couple of spits of rain here and there, but for the most part, this is perfect football weather. Four receivers in the formation for Anthony here. Has Heimberger behind him as his lone back. Looking to throw. Now he's going to tuck it up and take it himself. Out across the 25, out across the 30 before he's racked up. Five different black-shirted Tigers there to make sure he goes no further. Solomon Jackson, Tim Dalton, and Jonathan Larson among the handful of guys there. Paul Monaco will get credit as well. Clock running, 15 seconds left. First down for Wheaton North. Under pressure, and Anthony goes down for the first time. 
It'll be Monaco as well as Jack Buckholtz in on the sack. First sack of the ball game for the Tigers. Wheaton North will just let the clock run out. And we have played the first half of the 2015 high school football season. And we are scoreless. 0-0 Wheaton North and Wheaton Warrenville South after one half. Again, don't misconstrue a scoreless game with a bad game. A couple of decent plays on offense from either team, but it has certainly been the defenses that have been the story. And I think most people will tell you, much like in baseball where they tell you that at the beginning of the year, oftentimes the pitchers are ahead of the hitters, is that here, generally in high school football, the defenses are ahead of the offenses early in the year. And that was definitely the case through the first 24 minutes of this one as both defenses really played very, very well. No huge, huge plays. Wheaton Warrenville South secondary did a very nice job against the junior star quarterback Luke Anthony of Wheaton North. In fact, Blaze Barista did a great job in the secondary of setting a good tone early. A pass breakup, a couple of good tackles, and then later on in the half, when Wheaton North had hits, deepest penetration of the ball game. Barista was actually able to recover a fumble from Adam Torini and stop a Wheaton North charge. So, all things being equal, Wheaton North defense definitely equal to the task. Take a look at the Wheaton Warrenville South offense. Uh, Michael, uh, Mike Stebbins played very well in the first half. A couple of mishandled snaps that led to some big losses. But as far as handling the football, he's done a very nice job in a couple of zone reads of making a good decision of who to give the ball to or to take it himself as he's been able to have a little bit of success running the football. And he's made a couple of really nice throws. He's taken advantage of the size of Jalen Carter downfield. But the guy that was most impressive on offense, I thought, in the first half, catching the football was Nick Howell. Not a big guy, 5'11", 185-pound senior, but a good route runner and had a couple of solid catches to help the Tigers move the chains in the first half. But when it's all said and done, neither team able to get further than the other team's 30-yard line in the first half as this one was played in the middle of the field and we are scoreless after one half here in half number two. It'll be Wheaton Warrenville South kicking to Wheaton North. Tigers will be going from left to right here in half number two while the Falcons will be going right to left. Again, our thanks to our producer engineer Craig Dent taking care of all of the computer work tonight. Hopi Fulton did a great job running camera in ha first half of the ball game, and now we bring in J. Scott Kanetsky, Kine excuse me, who will not only be doing double duty here, will not only be running camera for us, but also providing a little color commentary. So, J. Scott, welcome aboard. Thank you, Chris. Tigers get set to boot it away. Three back deep for Wheaton North. Heimberger, the main man in the middle, getting set to kick it away. Benjamin Padelko. Right-footed kicker will approach and gives it a boot. High end over end kick will come to the near side. Catch made there. And the return across the 20. Little room to the outside of the 25. Turn the corner and there he goes. 35. And around the 40-yard line pulled down from behind is Dave Taylor, defensive back. And the biggest play of the game thus far ends up being the return of the second half kickoff as Wheaton North will be in business first and 10 out at its own 42-yard line. That was, a, that was a great kick. That was the furthest return, I think, so far in this game. Yeah, Dave Taylor showed off some speed, got some good blocking, went from the near side to the far side, and gives junior quarterback Luke Anthony great field position. Graham comes across in the formation. The handoff goes up to Bo Nidbala. He'll plow forward for a gain of three on first down. A second down and seven coming up for the Falcons. Defensive front has been strong thus far for the Tigers. Not a lot of running room for a Wheat North team that was not expected to run the ball very much anyway. Nidbala in the shotgun with Anthony. Again, Steele Graham comes across the formation. They're going to hand it to him. Cuts it up at the 45. He's across midfield, still on his feet. Picking his way and finally chopped down at the 42-yard line of the Tigers. Tim Dalton makes the stop. Best running play of the night thus far as Steele Graham, the 5'10 senior, has got Wheaton North down to the 41-yard line of the Tigers. So early in half number two, Wheaton North moving the football. 
Hawkins are usually regarded as a passing team, I believe, and they're doing a lot of running for a passing team this year. It's very interesting because I think that's got the Tigers maybe a little bit on their heels up front. Two receivers out to the left, one to the right. A wing on the right side of the formation. Now they bring Steele across. They bring Graham across. They fake it to him. They give it up to Nidbala up the middle. He gets horse tied and thrown down just inside the 40-yard line. Solomon Jackson with the tackle. Also up off the bottom of the pile. Eric LeBeau. Going to put the football at the 39-yard line of the Tigers. Gain of two. It'll be second down and eight. We're relatively uh, scoreless game this game. Last year was a high scoring game, I believe, 39 North. Yep. So this has been an interesting turn of events this year. No doubt about it. Wheaton North hung 30 on the Tigers last year, basically with, I mean, with the same quarterback and a lot of the same pieces on offense. So Tiger defense has been equal to the challenge. Anthony all by himself in the shotgun. Drops back to throw. Screen comes to the near side. Gustafson hit, but he comes off the tackle, and there he goes. Down the left side. He'll finally be dragged down at the 21-yard line of the Tigers. Perhaps a touchdown-saving tackle by Matt Simpalis. Gustafson looked to be bottled up right at the line of scrimmage, but was able to slip the tackle. And they're going to spot it at the 22-yard line. Deepest penetration of the ball game for either team. First possession of the second half. Falcons have got it first and 10 at the Tiger 22. Looks like halftime did wonders for North here. They're able to uh, remove and uh, bring it going here. Absolutely. Receivers left and right. Anthony, some final instructions as he'll send Giles out as a wing on the right side. Nidbala in the shotgun with him. Handoff goes up the middle to Nidbala. He's dragging a tackler inside the 20 down to about the 17-yard line. Latching on for dear life was Jack Farley, 5'10", junior linebacker. Nidbala got to the 18 for a gain of th four. And it'll be a second down and six. The entire Falcons offense turns and looks to the far sideline to get the offensive play call. And now the whistle blows and a timeout will be called by Wheaton North. So that was a little bit of a different look. They went with a little bit of a no huddle look there but weren't able to pull it off as the play clock was running down. They were forced to burn a timeout. And I believe they've had already two delay, two delay game penalties this game. Absolutely. Good call because that's been a problem with Luke Anthony. And you would expect with a guy who started most of the season last year that a lot of those kinks, despite the fact he's a junior, that a lot of those kinks would be worked out. But they've had some problems. They've not only had the two delay games, they've snapped the ball with under five on the play clock a couple of times as well. And so burning a timeout early in the second half of a close football game. You don't think much of it now, but toward the end of the game could actually end up being a really big thing. Yeah, definitely. All right, Falcons come off the far sideline. They've got their play call. Second down and six. Wheaton North at the 18-yard line, trying to break this scoreless tie early in quarter number three. Gustafson out wide to the left. Torini out wide right. Steel Graham in the slot right. Looking to throw Anthony to the right side. Off the fingertips of Graham and incomplete. Graham ran a little up and out. Anthony had time to throw but overshot him. Looked like there was a little bit of running room for him as well. Instead an incomplete pass. It'll be third down and six. Big play coming up here for the Tigers on defense. Yeah, this is this can be the difference between a red zone and a touchdown potentially for the Falcons. Or uh, some stopping them remaining the game scoreless. Something to keep in mind is that Wheaton North has an excellent kicker in Anthony Sawyer, and I think they would be in his range here if they wanted to try for a field goal, even if they don't gain another yard. Anthony in the shotgun all by himself, brings a Heimberger in motion, fakes to him, looks to throw to the end zone, and it is caught! Touchdown! Marcus Gustafson makes the grab. Touchdown, Falcons. 18-yard strike from Anthony to Gustafson, and it's 6-0 Falcons with a PAT coming up. So right out of the locker room, an impressive drive covering just over 55 yards, and an 18-yard touchdown pass from Anthony to Gustafson is giving the Tigers... A little bit of trouble. It's 6 nothing Falcons. The PAT from Sawyer is up, and it's good. With exactly nine minutes remaining in the third quarter, 
We have our first score of the ball game. It is Wheaton North 7 and Wheaton Warrenville South nothing. And that was a beautifully delivered ball by Anthony right into the waiting arms of Gustafson who ran a really nice in route and a good pitch and catch for the Falcons touchdown. An exciting uh, second half so far for the Falcons. And normally South's offense will be able to come back and get a touchdown. Maybe they be moved in two. We'll just have to see. And that's really going to be the question is can the Tiger offense put together a sustained drive? We hadn't seen it from either team. We just saw Wheaton North do it. Now it's going to be put into the court of the Tigers if Mike Stebbins and this offense can get going. And I would be surprised if we don't see a lot more J.J. Johnson at half number two, getting him the ball any way they can, whether it's handing it to him, pitching it to him, throwing screens to, throwing screens to him, trying to get their most dangerous offensive player more involved, much the way they did with Keyshawn Watson a year ago. Luke Foster, Owen England, and Johnson all back deep, but it's going to be a short kick. Recovered by one of the up guys, and then he gets drilled, and there's a flag. He went to a knee to catch it, so he was down, and two different Falcons blew up the receiver. A little the worse for where getting up is Jack Farley, but as it stands, it's going to be outstanding field position for the Tigers. As Farley caught the ball at the 32, it's going to be a 15-yard personal foul penalty. So Wheaton Warrenville South will start with outstanding field position at their own 47-yard line. Silly mistake made there by Wheaton North. It's tough. Your emotions sometimes get the best of you. You just scored. You're excited. You're on the road. It's a rivalry game. But you've got to keep your wits about you. You cannot afford to give up 15 free yards. See, the Tigers can take advantage. Nick Howell out wide to the left. Luke Foster in the slot on the left side. Johnson and England, the backs on the either side of Stebbins in the shotgun. Now Foster comes in motion from left to right. Snap back, handoff goes up the middle to Johnson. He's got room. He's to the 45 and tripped down just shy of the 40-yard line of Wheaton North. That might have been a touchdown saving tackle. Just getting a hand on Johnson was George Roskuska. If he doesn't touch him, it might have been taillights to the end zone for J.J. As it is, first down on the burst as he picks up 11 yards. This half, the offenses have been totally different than we saw in the first half. Two receivers to the left for the Tigers here. Stebbins in the shotgun. Back beside are Johnson on the left and England on the right. J.J., fake handoff. Stebbins keeps it himself on the zone read. And he'll spin his way inside the 40-yard line for a gain of a couple. Mike Stebbins has made pretty good decisions handling the football tonight. Right there was another good one. As he got to what they call the mesh point, where he put the ball into the belly of J.J. Johnson, North had read that play, and he was able to pull that ball back out and be able to go actually step behind J.J., and at least find a couple of yards on a play that honestly looked doomed. Second down and eight from the Falcon 39. Howell out wide to the left. Foster in the slot on the left side. Quick screen out to Foster on the left side. Can't catch it. Off his hands and incomplete. Foster had a little bit of room. Nico Gabenko is in coverage. But was probably giving him a good five to six yard cushion. So if Luke was able to latch on to that, I think there was a little bit of room to run. So a third down and eight for the Tigers from the 39 of Wheaton North. Wheaton Warrenville South trying to answer as Wheaton, Wheaton North took the opening kickoff of the second half and drove right down the field. Luke Anthony, an 18-yard touchdown pass to Marcus Gustafson. So a big third down play here. Three receivers bunched to the left, one to the right for the Tigers. Stebbins takes the snap, one step back, throws to the left side, and it's caught! First down, Tigers! J.J. Johnson with the grab, running down the hash mark on the left side, and the Tigers with their deepest penetration of the night. First and 10, Wheaton Warrenville South at the 18 of North. We're missing a lot of passing and running by J.J. Johnson tonight. 
He is the man that they want to get the ball into the hands to. He's going to come out here and twig, take a quick breather. As Stebbins comes off the near sideline with the play call. 7.30 left in the third quarter. 7-0 Wheaton North. But first and 10 for Wheaton Warrenville South at the 18 of the Falcons. Two receivers to the left. Two backs with Stebbins in the shotgun. Takes the snap. Inside handoff. It is J.J. Johnson still on the field with room to go. Inside the 20. Breaks a tackle at the 10. And stumbles forward to about the 8-yard line. And Johnson fired up as he gets up. And it's going to be another first down for the Tigers. First and goal for Wheaton Warrenville South. And I believe that's the first and goal we've seen this game. Needed 10, got 10. As number 7 for the Tigers gets it down to the 7-yard line. First and goal for Wheaton Warrenville South as they try to knot this ball game up. Stebbins breaks the huddle. Jalen Carter going to be the tight end on the right side of the formation. Offset pistol look. England in motion from left to right. Johnson directly behind Stebbins. Toss play goes to J.J. to the right side. Cuts it up inside the five. Spins down to around the one-yard line. Good hard-nosed running by J.J. Johnson. You think of him as a finesse guy, but right there put his shoulder down and spun himself down to the two. Second and goal for the Tigers. It's amazing that uh, North hasn't caught on. I think J.J. Johnson has had something to do with each and every play up to this point. You'd think they'd be looking for number seven every time he's out there. Yeah. Nick Howell goes out wide to the left. He's the only receiver split out in the formation. Double tight ends for the Tigers. I formation. England the fullback. Johnson the tailback. Stebbins under center. Turns. Hands. Right side. Johnson on the lead play. Still on his feet to the end zone. And touchdown! Touchdown! Wheaton Warrenville South. A two-yard touchdown run for J.J. Johnson. And the Tigers are a PAT away from tying it up. That is how you answer a long scoring drive as the Tiger offense comes out and takes it right back at the Falcons. The offense is like a whole summer game this, this half than last. Chan Vong, 5'7", senior, on to attempt the PAT. Stebbins, the quarterback, is the holder. He's counting to make sure the Tigers... Have enough guys on the field. They don't. Luke Foster runs on late. He's the wing on the right side of the formation. Play clock at 10, so plenty of time. Snap back to Stebbins is perfect. The kick from Vong is up, and it is good. 5.55 left in quarter number three. Tie ball game. 7-7. Wheaton North and Wheaton Warrenville South. So J.J. Johnson... Two-yard touchdown run. The PAT good. And after no scoring in the first half, each team scores on its first possession of the second half. And we have ourselves a 7-7 ball game. Now, we go to the other question. In the first half, we wondered if anybody would score. Now in the second half, we'll see if anybody can stop anybody. <laughs> Podolko, who will kick it away. Steel Heim, or excuse me, Graham Heimberger. And Taylor back deep. Taylor, a great return on the last kickoff that helped set up that Wheaton North scoring drive. The kick is away. They're going to kick it away from him this time. It goes to the left side. It bounces past everybody and will go to the end zone for a touchback. So a good kick by Benjamin Podelko. Kicks it away from Taylor, who had the big return, and then Steele Graham just kind of misplayed it, to be honest, and had it skip by him and into the end zone. So it'll be a first and 10 for Wheaton North from their own 20, starting significantly further back than they did on their most recent drive on which they scored. They will put the football on the near side hash mark. And that is where the Falcons will go to work. Wheat Warrenville South's defensive line, one of the leaders, 5'5", 180 pound Justin Chu, right at the nose guard position. Handoff goes right side, Adam Torini on a little flanker end around. He'll get three. 
Tim Dalton up to spin him around. Also in on the stop, Will Bach. So again, Wheaton North a little bit off their normal script running the football. Yeah, it's amazing. You see, you think we'd see a lot of passing this game. And they just keep going to the ground and it seems to be working for them. Gain a four on first down on the Torini jet sweep. Second down and six. Two receivers right, one to the left as junior quarterback Luke Anthony in the shotgun. Play fake on the handoff. Now under pressure, he's going to take off and run. He's out to across the 30, and he's going to have the first down on the scramble. Eric LeBou makes the stop. Another thing about uh, the Falcons running game is it seems to be a lot of running by the cornerback. It's not something that Luke Anthony usually does. They don't do a lot of designed running with him. Now a handoff again on Torini on that end around. He's dragged down from behind. Nice play by Jack Buckholtz there. Looked like there was a little bit of room for Torini as he cut that play up, but Buckholtz able to sweep the legs out from underneath him after a gain of just two. But yeah, Luke Anthony doesn't want to run unless he has to. Now hurry up from the Falcons. Trying to change the tempo a little bit here. Anthony in the shotgun. Snap goes over his head. Bounces back around the 20. And Anthony's able to fall on it there for a huge loss. So a big mistake there by the Falcons. Some bad snaps plagued the Tigers in the first half. But the first bad snap of the second half belongs to the Falcons. And it's going to set up a third down and 20. And before this drive, we were talking about this. Um, a mistake by one team can change the whole momentum of the game here. And that might be in the Tigers' favor there. And that changes the field position as well. I mean, that ball was up outside the 30-yard line. Now it's back at the 20 on a third and 20. So a lot of work to do for Anthony here. He has one back behind him, two receivers to the right, one to the left. Straight back to throw is Anthony. Under pressure, rolling, hit and dropped. It'll actually be a short gain. But Jack Buckholtz able to drag him down from behind and... Wheaton North looked like they were going to maybe have a chance to move the football. Instead, the Tiger defense holds. And with that change on that big play, Tiger should get decent field position here after the punt. Gain a two on the scramble there for Anthony before he was dragged down by Buckholtz. So not a sack for Jack Buckholtz, but a great defensive play nonetheless from the 6'1 senior. So the excellent kicker, Anthony Sawyer, also the punter for this Wheaton North Falcon Club, stands at his own nine-yard line awaiting the snap. Foster and Johnson back deep, and now he's going to have to kick from a little further back. Another delay a game penalty against the Falcons. And they've been having an all-game for them. They seem to be flagged by this delay a game thing. I'm telling you, for those of you who aren't here, the brand-new play clocks, big, bright, white neon. I don't know how they're missing them. So now inside of his five-yard line is Sawyer awaiting the snap. He gets the kick away, a beauty in the middle of the field. J.J. Johnson will call for a fair catch. He makes it at his own 49-yard line where the Tigers will be in business. First and 10, Wheaton Warrenville South. 2.57 left in the third quarter of a 7-7 game in the battle for Bragg and Rights in Wheaton. I was in this game last year on the north side, and uh, it was just terrible. I South scored a quick touchdown, and um, they got a safety, and then that was it, and that was all in the first quarter. It was really that point where Wheaton Warrenville South really re reached their low point last year and found themselves staring at what looked like would be a non-playoff season, but then they rip off four wins in a row, get into the playoffs, then make it all the way to the state quarterfinals. First and 10 here. Stebbins in the shotgun. He's got two receivers. Now in motion comes Luke Foster. The handoff goes up the middle to Owen England. He's got room to run to the 45 and down to the 40-yard line of Wheaton North. Shoestring tackle made by George Rozuska. But a good run from England. 11 yards on the gain. First down Tigers. It's like a whole new offense here in the second half for Wheaton Warrenville South. And for North, too. It's really been incredible. It's like... A whole new game. Stebbins comes all the way to the near sideline, gets the play called directly from head coach Ron Muhich, and then runs back himself. There is no messenger in this system. 
Demons will always go get it himself. Nick Howell, the receiver out to the right. They're going to throw a swing pass. Catch made by Luke Foster. Makes one man miss. He's inside the 40 to the 35. Inside the 30 and Bulldog out of bounds at the 28-yard line. First varsity reception for junior Luke Foster, and it's good for a first down. What an amazing play by Foster there for that catch and then to be able to juke out about five guys on uh, North defense here. Not a great throw from Stebbins. It was a little behind him, and Foster did a good job to adjust, make the catch, and then turn up field. They're going to mark him out of bounds of the 29 of North, a gain of 11. And it's first and 10 for the Tigers. Foster in the slot left. Howell out wide to the left. I formation. Now Foster comes in motion. Turn hand. J.J. Johnson goes up the middle and goes down into the arms of big Nick Namhoff. 6'1", 230-pound defensive lineman. As J.J. got a yard, maybe. It'll be second down and nine and not good here. J.J. Johnson up and favoring his left leg as he comes off the pile. He's trying to stay on the field, but it looks like the Tigers, are they going to burn a timeout and J.J. Gadal goes down? This is not good for Sal. Now he goes down and looks to be clutching his left knee. And what was getting to be a little bit of a raucous crowd here at Wheat Warrenville South goes silent as J.J. Johnson is down. Now they grab his leg, and it looks like they're treating it as a cramp. So that's outstanding news. If it were bad, there's no way the trainer would have grabbed his right leg, and they are pushing the leg up, as you would see, to try to work on a cramp. So this is actually very good news. In fact, now they've got both legs up. He may be experiencing cramping in both legs. And the whole South Stands, which has been standing the whole game, is now all sitting down. I'll tell you what, I, you know, I, I, I'm as guilty of it as anybody, to be honest with you, where you say it's just a cramp. Okay, think about when that happens to you, if you're sitting at home or I'm not the most athletic guy in the world, but I maybe you move your leg the wrong way and you get a cramp in your leg or you get a cramp in your thigh, it hurts. Yeah. But you get a guy like this who's nothing but muscle, and a cramp is going to be devastatingly painful. But the good news here, J.J. up, walking off under his own power to a big cheer from the home crowd. I think that's another thing that sometimes this nicer weather sometimes lulls people into a false sense of security about not continuing to take liquids in. When it's 100 degrees out, everybody's telling you all the time, drink water, drink water, drink water. Well, you're still exerting yourself a lot here. And... J.J., good news, isn't even going to the bench. He's just going to continue to stand on the sideline. So that's great news if you're a Tiger fan. Jones and Odom, the receivers on the left. Backs are in the I formation. England, the fullback. And Luke Foster, the tailback. Foster gets the handoff off the right side. Ducks his head and drilled down around the 27-yard line. Stop made from the secondary by Jonah Parker, senior defensive back. And with J.J. Johnson sitting on the sideline right now, Luke Foster will really have to step up here and make some great plays for the Tigers if the Tigers want to win this game. It's a tough go. I mean, you're yeah. a junior, you know, not a real big guy, kind of a shifty, kind of a change of pace back, but you're right. I mean, he is now put squarely into the middle of a huge rivalry game. Third down and six for the Tigers after the gain of two by Foster. 7-7 game. Just went under a minute remaining in the third quarter. And Stebbins didn't like what he saw as he came to the line of scrimmage. He's going to burn a timeout. So each team has now used a timeout in the second half. Both have two remaining in this one. 56 seconds left here in the third quarter. Wheat North 7, Wheat Warrenville South 7. As each team scored on its first possession of the second half. Wheat North... Started right around their own 40-yard line, mount, marched right down the field, and then Luke Anthony fired a strike to Marcus Gustafson on a slant route for an 18-yard touchdown pass with nine minutes left in the third quarter. Wheaton Warrenville South answered, came right back down the field, started with great field position, actually got a break as they started at their own 47-yard line. They would have started at their own 32 had it not been for a personal foul on that play and move the ball up to the 47-yard line, and eventually the Tigers would pound it in on a two-yard touchdown run by J.J. Johnson. 
PAT good. And we were tied at 7 with 5.55 left in the third quarter. The Wheaton Warrenville South defense held on North's most recent offensive possession. And now the Tigers are staring at a third down and six from the Wheaton North 26 with under a minute to go in the third quarter. And you've got to figure here, if the Tigers don't get a first down on this play, I would think that they would go for it on fourth down. You're probably a little too far for a field goal, too close to punt. Even if you were to turn it over on downs with the way your defense is playing, I think you take the chance. Yeah, and that's a tricky situation when you're in this spot. Stebbins will go under center. England is the lone back. Two receivers left, one to the right. Stebbins straight back to throw on a seven-step drop. Looking to set up a screen, and it's out of, and out of the hands of Jalen Carter. That is the play that they ran in their scrimmage a week ago that Jalen took 65 yards for a touchdown. There, Stebbins just didn't deliver a very good ball. If Carter catches that ball, it's probably a touchdown. But just couldn't get it into his hands. So it'll be fourth down and six, and it does look like the Tigers will just go ahead and go for it here. Stebbins has head coach Ron Muhich right in his right ear yelling out the play. Alexi Sorokin goes off as Ashton Jones comes in as a receiver here for the Tigers. Out to the left go Howell, Carter, and Foster. And now it's going to be delay a game against the Tigers. Could not get the play off. And what was already going to be tough at 4th and 6, going to be even tougher at 4th and 11. Do you think you're going to uh, go for it now with a 4th and 11 or are you punting it? I think you still go for it here. The punt, I think what you're thinking about here is if you punt it, it's probably going to go in the end zone. That's to the 20-yard line. You only gain 11 yards of possession. So I think you go ahead and say, what the heck? Take the chance here to get the first down, and I think Ron Muich has enough faith in Mark Jackson and his defense to go ahead and take the chance here. Potential big play in this ball game right here, though. Officials trying to sort some things out here as they come to the near sideline. I don't know if there's a scoreboard issue. I think the clock might have been running. And so they may be trying to reset the clock here. Would be my guess. Not positive. Clock currently sits at 30 seconds. It's now been reset to 34. Everybody's happy? Here we go. Jones out wide to the right. England in the slot right. Three receivers out to the left. Howell, Carter, and Foster. Stebbins by himself in the shotgun. Looks to his left. Takes the snap. Drops back. Looks to throw. Pop flies deep down the left side. In double coverage, the ball is incomplete. And you can see from the beginning of that play that that was going to be a blitz by the North defense. And... Um Pass was intended for Jalen Carter. He was double covered on the far side. Did a pretty good job to get his hands to the football, but the Falcons knock it away. So a great opportunity for Wheaton Warrenville South goes by the wayside. And the game stays tied at 7 with 27 seconds left in the third quarter. North will now take over first and 10 at its own 31. Torini goes out wide to the right. Two receivers close to each other here on the left side, short side of the field. They one run receiver in motion. The handoff goes up to middle to Nidbala, and he's got nowhere to go. Stacked up and driven back. Four black shirts there to make sure he went no further. Solomon Jackson, Jack Buckholtz, and also up off the bottom of the pile. Jamal Smith, 5'10", 184-pound senior. Gain of one on the play. It'll be second down and nine. And that will be the final play of the third quarter. So a scoreless first half. Each team scores on its first possession of the third quarter. We go to the fourth. Seven all. Wheaton Warrenville South and Wheaton North. The outcome still very much in doubt here for the Battle of Wheaton. Falcons have actually won two of the last three of these rivalry games. This is a big win for South here. If they can win tonight, that's the last two wins against North they've had at home. And so that would be a big win for South tonight. Well, the thing is, too, for both of these teams, this game is really a big game 
for lots of reasons. I mean, if you're Wheaton North, next week you have to go on the road to Joliet Catholic. Okay? That's about as tall an order as there is in the state of Illinois in high school football. For Wheaton Warrenville South, no real, you know, cakewalk for them either as they have to go on the road to a Lake Park team that has gotten better and better. They've got a defensive lineman who's got a full ride to Michigan State. That's a good football team, and on the road, that'll be a tough order. Second down and nine for Wheaton North as we start the fourth quarter. Falcons going left to right in the road, white uniforms. Anthony takes the snap in the shotgun, looking to go deep. First time he's aired it out so far tonight. He's got a man, and it's incomplete. Gustafson had a step and had it in his hands and could not reel it in. He, he probably took his ball off the, he took his eye off the ball for one second there, and that made all the difference in that play. Sam Milnemau had the coverage, was a step behind. That's the first time that we've seen Anthony really show off the arm tonight, and he threw a beauty, but Gustafson couldn't reel it in. We've seen a couple of drops from Marcus Gustafson tonight, to be honest. A couple of times he's had balls that looked catchable that he's not been able to latch onto. So what could have been a big play, instead an incompletion. It's third and nine. Gustafson goes out wide right this time. Graham and Torini to the left. Now Graham comes in motion. Little screen goes to the left side. Catch made by Torini. He will not get far. Initial contact made by Blaze Barista after the grab. And again, there to make sure that he went no further was Jamel Smith. Good defensive sequence for the senior. It'll be fourth down and five for North. And the Falcons will punt it away. J.J. Johnson is not going to go back as one of the punt returners. He's still here on the sideline trying to work things out. So it'll be Luke Foster and Tim Dalton that will actually go back. So the defensive back gets an opportunity as those two stand back at their own 30. Snap back is good. The punt is away by Sawyer. It'll be Foster who catches the punt and Fair catches it at his own 24-yard line. So no opportunity for a return. The Tigers will start first and 10 at their own 24. We've played one minute here in the fourth quarter. Game tied at seven. It's turned out to be a really good football game. Yeah, I mean, the first half was excellent to watch from a scoreless half. Great defense, and now we have great offense and great defense here in the second half. It's been... All around a beautiful night and a beautiful game. It's like baseball, right? There's some people who like pitcher's duels. There's some people who like to see a lot of home runs. We've seen a little bit of everything so far. A great pitcher's duel in the first half and a little bit more offense here in the second. Tigers will come out in the eye formation. J.J. Johnson back in the ball game. He is the eye back here. Stebbins turns, hands. J.J. off the left side, nowhere to go. Spun down for a loss. Tackle made by Matt Giles, senior linebacker, one of the defensive stalwarts for this Falcon D. Makes a real nice play there as Johnson loses two. Clock running down to 10.35, remaining in the ballgame, seven apiece. Stebbins just now coming off the sideline with the play call. The play clock down to 15. Tigers going to have to hurry here to get this playoff. They already are looking at a second down and 12. Five more yards is not something they want to have to overcome. Howell goes out wide to the left. Jones is out wide to the right. Eye formation again. This time England is the tailback. Handoff goes to him off the right side. He's got a little bit of room, but not much. Gets back the yards that were lost and maybe a couple more. They'll give England credit out to the 26-yard line. A gain of three. And it'll set up a third down and eight here for the Tigers. Luke Foster comes off the sideline for Wheat Warrenville South. He'll replace Jones. And now Stebbins into the huddle with the play call. Everybody here waiting for a big play. I think everybody's waiting for that, that big run, that, that big defensive play. We just haven't seen it. Play clock down to four. Three, two, one. Stebbins doesn't get the play off. It'll be a delay of game. And there's a flag on the play, I believe, as well. 
Yeah, I think that's going to be the delay of game. There's another one right at the line of scrimmage, but I think they both called the same thing. And so move that back five yards. A third and eight becomes a third and 13 from, the own, from the own, their own 22-yard line for the Tigers. And the Tigers get a first down here, and this is going to be a really big play for them. Backs on the either side of Stebbins. One of them is Johnson. Foster and Howell out to the left. Stebbins looking left, wants to throw over the middle. The pass is caught by Howell. A juggling grab. Looked like it was going to be intercepted, and Howell ripped it away from the defender. Jonah Parker thought he had a pick. Howell instead has a huge reception for a Tiger first down, and now it looks like Howell is battling some cramps. What an amazing catch by Howell. He, uh, when J.J. Johnson having a cramp, and now it looks like him. Uh, this has been an amazing player game. A 16-yard throw from Stebbins to Howell. The throw is a little bit of a wobbler, and Howell did an outstanding job of saving his quarterback an interception. What a, what a great play. That's, I think that might be the best play we've seen all night. I'll tell you, I have been very, very impressed, and I will give credit where credit is due. Mr. Bob Barista from the Tiger Paws Booster Club, the president of said club, told me at the scrimmage the other night, that's the guy to look out for. Watch Nick Howell. He has great hands, and he's a great route runner. He pops up, and he runs off to the near sideline here. Well, so far, Howell has been outstanding. He'll go to the sideline here. Hopefully we'll be able to get back into the play relatively quickly for the Tigers. Clock is stopped with 9.17 left in the fourth. Game tied at 7. Tigers looking at a first and 10 from their own 38. Ball right smack in the middle of the field. Weed Warrenville South in the home black uniforms going right to left here in the fourth quarter. Jones and Foster, receivers to the left. England and, and Johnson, the backs with Stebbins in the shotgun. Stebbins takes the snap, hands it off to Johnson. J.J. trying to get to the edge. Cuts it back up across the 40 and drags a couple of tacklers out to about the 44-yard line. Pretty good hard run there from J.J. Johnson as he was able to drag 195-pound Dan Weber at the end of the play. And the south side here in the, the home crowd student section has just been electric tonight. It's usually not that you have to get too much to get up for for week one. But you go ahead and throw in Wheaton North for good measure, and uh, it's been pretty wired up here so far tonight. Gain a five on first down for Johnson. A second down and five for the Tigers from their own 44. I formation. This time England the tail of the tandem. Actually, the fullback is J.J. Johnson. England gets the handoff. Plows ahead up the middle. He'll get one, maybe two. Setting up a third down and short for Wheaton South here. That was interesting to see. J.J. lined up as the fullback. I'm not sure he's done that a whole lot in his career as Owen England was the feature back in the I-formation there. Looking at this game, this is probably going to be one of South and North's best game in the season. Relatively close the whole way and going to ask for a better night. Absolutely. England gets credit for two, a third down and two, and an enormous play in this game right here. Can the Tigers move the chains, or do the Falcons come up with a big stop? Foster and Howell to the left. I formation. This time it's England as the fullback, and Johnson as the tailback. Stebbins under center. Turns. Play fakes to Johnson. Throws to the near side. It's incomplete. Pass was intended for England. It was a wobbler. May have been tipped at the line of scrimmage. As it is, an incomplete pass. It'll be a fourth down and two. Very interesting on a third and two in that situation that the Tigers did not run the football. Yeah, um, both teams, regarded as both passing teams, have just been running tonight, and it's really been a sight to see. Steele Graham back deep at his own 20 to await the punt from Andrew Leonard. Snap is perfect. Leonard gets the left foot into it. End over end punt is caught at the 24-yard line, and that is where... Wheat North will take over first and 10. So, looked as if Wheat Warrenville South was mounting a drive. It stalls. A punt gives the football back to Wheat North. And they're actually going to spot it at the 25 yard line. And that's where the Falcons will start. 7 19 left in the fourth quarter of a tight and tense battle, seven apiece. 
Wheat North quickly to the line of scrimmage after the change in possession. Three receivers to the right, one to the left. Fake handoff, throw goes over the middle. It is tipped and caught. Dangerous play there for Wheat North. It's tipped and caught by Michael Gell, 210-pound junior tight end. And what could have been a disaster for Wheaton North ends up being a gain of five. A second down and five coming up. It looked like Justin Chu, all five foot five of them, actually got a hand on that pass. What an amazing catch and amazing tackle by Sal. Yeah. So Gell goes out to the left along with Torini. Graham and Gustafson out to the right. Johnson looking to throw under pressure and down he goes! Solomon Jackson got him! First sack of the year for Solomon. Back to the 28-yard line. As just not enough time for Anthony to throw as he tried to roll out to his right. Loss of three. It'll be third and eight. And we are just about halfway through this fourth quarter. Six minutes left in the game. Seven all. Three receivers go out to the left. One out to the right. That's Gustafson. Anthony drops back to throw. The right-hander looking down the left side. The pass is caught. Wide open was Gell. We had not even seen Michael Gell in the game. He's made two huge catches on this drive. And Wheaton North has it first and 10 at the Tiger 49-yard line. Huge third down conversion. And I'm guessing that now that these amazing plays by uh, Gal here, we'll be seeing a lot more of those tonight. Anthony again back to throw. He swings it out of the backfield to the right side to Nightbella, and he'll get his way down to the 45, maybe the 44-yard line of the Tigers. Tackle made there by Paul Monaco. But now a little bit of momentum on that far sideline for Wheaton North. Gain of four. Second down and six. Two to the right, two to the left. Anthony's in the pistol. He'll send Graham across the formation, putting three receivers on the left side. Anthony back to throw. Under pressure again. Trouble, and down he goes! Paul Monaco with his second sack of the game. There's a flag down. I actually think Solomon Jackson was held on the play. It will be holding. That will be declined. Now, he pointed the wrong way. He said holding against Wheaton Warrenville South. That's wrong. It's holding against Wheaton North. That penalty will be declined. The Monaco sack takes the ball all the way back inside the North 40-yard line, setting up a third and extremely long here for the Falcons. A huge play by Monaco, his second sack of the night. So the ball at their own 40. They have to get to the Tiger 39. So second down. I said third. It's second down and 21. Anthony takes the snap. Fakes short to his right. Now looking downfield. Under pressure. Now he'll scramble. Flushed out of the pocket. Running for his life. Goes to the far side. Not a lot of room. And down he goes. Excellent defensive pursuit from the Tigers. Jack Buckholtz just would not let Luke Anthony free, and he is spun down back inside the 40. It'll be a loss of a, about a half a yard and a third down and real long coming up. And now we have a stoppage of the clock. And the officials getting together. I think there might be some question on what down it is. They have third down on the marker on the far side. I thought it was I thought the last play was third down and that this should be fourth. But I might be wrong. They've had they've had trouble with the clock all night long. Well, and it's just I, I, Yes, it is fourth down. Hey, even a blind squirrel finds an acorn every now and then. <laughs> so it is fourth down and extremely long and North will be forced to punt. 4:19 left in the fourth. 7-7 seven, seven, Wheat North and Wheat Warrenville South. Again, it'll be Dalton and Luke Foster back deep, awaiting the punt from Anthony Sawyer. And the guy to watch out for here is Luke Foster. 
Snap back. Punt is away. It is sky high but short. On the far side, it'll go out of bounds. Let's see where they mark it. Still going. And they're going to mark it at the 39-yard line. Not a very good punt from the normally short-footed Anthony Sawyer. And Wheaton Warrenville South again will start with good field position. First and 10 at their own 39. Exactly four minutes left in the game as they will try to break this 7-7 tie. Well, like you said, there's four minutes left. And with the great field position here they have, this is a now time for South to take advantage and maybe get a touchdown or a field goal. South comes off the sideline. They don't huddle. They go right to the line of scrimmage. Johnson, Carter, and Howell are the receivers to the left. Jones is the one receiver on the right. Stebbins in the shotgun has Owen England on his left hip. Stebbins may be changing the play here at the line of scrimmage. Barks some instructions to his offensive line and takes the snap. Quick throw goes to the short side, and it is in and out of the hands of Jones. It's a second drop for Ashton Jones in this ball game. Second down and 10 coming up for the Tigers here. The Tigers want to win this game. They need to pull out this one last drive that they have here and really get going. Second down and 10 for the Tigers. Play clock down to 12, and they are just now breaking the huddle. Same look. Carter, Johnson, and Howell to the left. Jones to the right. England with Stebbins in the backfield. This time Stebbins will roll to his left. Looking to throw. Fires to the near side. Pass caught by Howell. Still on his feet. It'll get dragged down from behind. Look like Howell might break out of that tackle and have a little more room to run. Be a gain of about five before he gets pulled down by Matt Giles who's also trying to pull the football out. And there's a flag on the play, and it's going to be holding against one of the Tiger offensive linemen. So again, Wheaton Warrenville South going the wrong way. So instead of what looked like maybe a third down and five coming up, instead the Tigers will be looking at a second down and 20. And you got to be wondering what's going on in the head of head coach Ron Muhich here. As he's watching his team go backwards, a little time left here in this game. And then in this part of the field, this is where you worry about making the big mistake. If you throw the ball here and potentially an interception could be the nail in the coffin in this one. So this is why Ron Muhich is good at what he does because these are the decisions where you've got to decide here just how adventuresome you want to be and whether or not you're willing to play field position here and then potentially take your chances in overtime. Three receivers right, one to the left. Play clock winding down. Two, one. Stebbins gets the snap. It's a counter play. J.J. Johnson, lots of room up the middle. 30, gets to the edge, 35, to the 40. He spins out of bounds. And he's tackled after going out of bounds, but J.J. was still trying to make a move as Luke Bennett, and he got tangled up. What an amazing play by J.J. Johnson, and he's going to be the key to this drive. This he gets back 14 yards on the run. It'll be... Third and at least manageable at a third and a long nine. 3.15 to go here in the fourth quarter. Still, Wheaton North 7, Wheaton Warrenville South 7. Both teams' touchdowns came on their first possessions of the third quarter. That is all the scoring that we have had tonight. Nose of the football just barely touching the 40-yard line. Ball on the near side hash mark. Johnson and Howell go out wide to the right. Jones to the left. Stebbins in the shotgun with England. Rolling right, Stebbins, looking to throw, double clutches, fires, passes, caught! First down, Tigers on the far side! Another grab by, guess who? Nick Howell, another clutch catch! First down, Wheaton Warrenville South. Nathan Johnson has really been the star up until the fourth quarter when he got that cramp. And now Nick Howell has really stepped up. And um, that's really great for South right now. Stebbins really did a good job of stepping into that throw and hanging a rope on the far side. A 15-yard pitch and catch from Stebbins to Howell. First down, Tigers, the 45-yard line of the Falcons. Three receivers bunch to the left. Howell, Johnson, and Carter. Jones still out by himself on the right side. That's the short side of the field. Stebbins in the shotgun with England. They're going to give it to Owen England up the middle. He'll get... Down to around the 42-yard line before being stacked up. And making the stop, the omnipresent Eric Mueller. 
Six foot three junior linebacker is one heck of a player. And talking about this game, you know, I've been coming to Wheaton North versus Wheaton South games, living here in Wheaton since a long, long time ago, back when Riley O'Toole was the quarterback for South. And this is probably the best one yet. It has been competitive as heck. In week one, everybody wondered what it would be like. You know, it's really strange for this rivalry game to be this early in the season. Well, it, to this point, has not disappointed. Gain of three for England on first down. Second down and seven for the Tigers. Howell to the left. Jones to the right. Backs are in the eye with Stebbins under center. Dotting the eye is Johnson. Toss play. This play is broken from the start. J.J. trying to make something out of nothing, but he's going to lose a couple yards. Somebody made a mistake. One person was expecting a handoff. The other one was trying to pitch it to him. That could have been an abject disaster. Instead, it's just a loss of two, setting up a third and nine. Clock spinning down to 135 left in regulation. If South wants to make a good drive and potentially get a field goal and touchdown, they're going to have to start moving. I think the Tigers would love to have the last possession of this ball game score and go into the field house a winner, but... There's a lot of football left right here. And if they do that, that'll be a buzzer meter game. Three receivers to the right. Jalen Carter's in the slot. Keep an eye on him here. Stebbins in the shotgun. Looks right, looks left. Low snap, he's got it. Looking in the middle of the field. It's intended for Carter. It's tipped and incomplete. Mm. They wanted to get it to Jalen. The throw was to his upfield hand, but he could only get one hand on it. It falls incomplete. It'll set up a fourth down and about eight from the Wheaton North 44-yard line with 105 left in the game, and the offense has not left the field yet. Now they will. Not only should uh, South have caught that ball, but North had a good chance for the interception there, too. Once the ball gets tipped, there's an age-old adage that I love. It's offensive coaches say, when you throw the football, three things can happen, and two of them are bad. And that was almost one of the real bads, which is an interception. Andrew Leonard gets set to punt it away. Steel Graham back deep. He's going to let it bounce. It bounces at the 15. Takes a tiger hop inside the 10. Still rolling, and it'll die inside the Wheat North 5-yard line. I'll tell you what. Junior defensive lineman Andrew Leonard has done an outstanding job punting the football tonight. And right now, he just dramatically changed field position. And now, if the Wheaton North offense makes a mistake, it could be the defense... It could be the difference in the game. And if South is looking at a win here before the clock time runs out, they're going to need a safety. 51 seconds remaining. Wheaton Warrenville South has two timeouts with which to stop the clock. And I'll be very interested to see what Joe Wardinsky, the head coach for Wheaton North, decides to do here. He's going to leave Luke Anthony in the shotgun. Receiver to the right, two to the left. Handoff goes to... Graham up the middle. He'll get it out across the five-yard line to about the seven. Let's see if the Tigers use their timeouts here to stop the clock, and it looks like they will. So there's the second charge timeout to Wheaton Warrenville South in the second half. The run by Steele Graham picked up a couple. A second down and eight coming up. I think more than anything, if you're Wheaton Warrenville South here, is you just want to force... Wheaton North to have to keep snapping the football. Anytime you put the ball in the air, something bad can happen. It's really interesting to me. We have not seen Wheaton North take one snap from under center tonight. Every snap has been in the shotgun. And even in this situation, when they were set up inside their own five-yard line, almost every team in the country would put their quarterback under center and run a lead play or something simple. But even in that situation, with their quarterback standing in the end zone, in a tie game with a minute under a minute to go, they still have him in the shotgun. I find that really interesting, and he's going to be in the shotgun again here on second down and eight. Receiver to the left, two to the right. Anthony in the shotgun. He's got Heimberger with him. Handoff will go to Heimberger off the left side, trying to plow his way forward. He'll get it out across the 10-yard line, and Wheat Warrenville South will now use its final timeout with a third down and medium coming up. I'll well, call it a third down and short. About three, three and a half here for the Falcons. Well, 35 seconds left. Certainly looks like we're staring overtime in the face here in week one. And when this cross-town rivalry going into overtime will just make everything even more dramatic 
for everyone that we didn't talk about. So each team over with their respective coaches. A third down and four, we'll call it, from the from their own 11-yard line for Wheaton North here. Wheaton Warrenville South cannot stop the clock again. My guess will be here that you will see Wheaton North run some type of a sweep play that will take a little bit of time off the clock. So once he's tackled, there'll be less than 25 seconds remaining and regulation time will expire. But we'll see what the Falcons decide to do. They bring a receiver in motion across. They're going to hand off. That's Torini. He'll be thrown for a loss back inside the 10. Wheaton Warrenville South does not have any timeouts left, and the play clock will not start again. So Wheaton North does not have to snap the football again. They won't snap the football again, and we are going to go to overtime here in week one. Well, just when you thought it couldn't get any more interesting. And Wheaton North will go first in the first overtime. Well, when them picking the south side, the only reason I can think of that is maybe those LED lights on that new scoreboard must be blinding or something. <laughs> so Wheaton South will go on defense first. We are tied at seven as we go to overtime. The only scoring in the ballgame, each team scored on its first possession of the third quarter. For Wheaton North, a Luke Anthony 18-yard touchdown pass to Marcus Gustafson. For Wheaton Warrenville South, a J.J. Johnson two-yard touchdown run. That is it. But we will have to have at least one more score in this game for somebody to win. So we will play on the south end, away from the big scoreboard. And Wheaton North will have the first possession. Each team will get to possess the ball in the overtime. Wheaton North will set the tone for what Wheaton South will have to do. So it is first and goal at the 10. Ball on the near side hash mark. Torini and Gustafson go wide to the left. No receivers on the right side of the formation. Handoff up the middle and a gain of two. Nice tackle. And a solid start from Wheaton North. I mean, that's two more yards. And they're that much closer. And you got to think that if Wheaton North doesn't get a touchdown here, they're going to use their take advantage of their amazing kicker here and get that field goal for three. Jonathan Larson, good stop there on the carry by Bo Nidbala. Second down and goal from the eight. Gustafson to the left. Two receivers out to the right. Pistol formation as Muller comes in motion. Another handoff up the middle to Nidbala, and he will spin down to the five-yard line. Third and goal coming up in overtime number one. Jack Buckholz with the stop. So interestingly enough, Wheaton North, first two plays in overtime, two runs. And that, and now they're at third. I believe it's third, and they got five to go to get that touchdown. So they made halfway of what they need to do now. There is no clock. The only clock in play here is the play clock. So the there is no game clock in this situation. Third down and goal from the five. Play clock down to five. As North breaks the huddle, they're gonna have to hurry. Three, two, one, and it's gonna be a delay of game. Wow, what a costly penalty. So instead of third and goal from the five, it'll be third and goal from the ten. So a huge mistake there by Luke Anthony, the quarterback. And almost like this whole game with North has been foreshadowing here. They've had trouble all night with this delay of game. And here's where it's going to cost them. Gustafson and Heimberger, the receivers to the left. Out wide to the right are Graham and Torini. Anthony back to throw, looking to the left side. He's got it to the end zone. It is tipped and incomplete oh. in the hands of Gustafson right at the front of the end zone. But Blaze Barista got his hand just in there to knock it away. A huge play from the senior defensive back. It looked like Gustafson was going to tiptoe the sideline right at the front of the end zone, but he couldn't hang on as Barista knocked it away at the last second. 
And this is now the difference between a seven-point touchdown for North and a three-point field goal. So instead, a field goal attempt. They will spot the ball at the 17-yard line as a 27-yard attempt. And now whistles blow, and we will have a timeout called by Wheaton Warrenville South, as I don't believe they were real thrilled with the kick team that they had in there. So to the best of my knowledge, if I remember correctly, in each overtime, you get one timeout. So now the Tigers, when they are on offense, will not have a timeout at their disposal. And that's an interesting to decide to use it here with a nine-gun kick line. You think you won that more I, I think the, I think the worry there might have been the fact that they might have had too many guys on the field is what I think it was looking like. And the last thing that they wanted to do was to get a penalty that would move north closer. And so I think they decided the timeout was a good one to take there. So a 27-yard field goal attempt coming up for Anthony Sawyer, 5'11", 190-pound senior, really good kicker. He's punted the ball pretty well tonight, had one that was not great, and his only attempt to place kick tonight was a PAT. That was true. The stands are electric here. We're vibrating right now. Nico Gabenko is the holder. The 27-yard attempt. It's a fake, and they don't get it. Why would you do that? Wheaton North tries to run a fake, and they don't do it. All Wheaton Warrenville South has to do is kick a field goal, and they win the game. What a moan-headed move by Wheaton North. That is inexplicable. You have one of the better field goal kickers in the entire DuPage Valley Conference and an opportunity to take the lead in the first overtime. Instead, they try to run a fake as they take one of their wings and run him inside, and the holder pitches it to him. And no chance he picked up a yard, maybe. So Wheaton Warrenville South, a score of any kind, and they win. And unfortunately for North, Wheaton Warrenville South is probably going to take the field goal if it comes to fourth down and win the game. I formation, Johnson, the tail of the tandem. The only receiver out to the right. Nick Howell. Stebbins, long count from under center. Turns, hands, J.J. Johnson. Ducks his head, two hands on the football, and ends up falling forward down to around the seven-yard line. Well, I'm going to be real interested to pick up a newspaper tomorrow morning and hear Joe Wardinsky's explanation for trying to fake the field goal in the first overtime. I would have had him kicked it. Maybe and that's why I'm not a coach. <laughs> but, I mean, maybe he's got uh, a great answer. Yeah. I, I just don't know what it would be. I mean, that. I mean, all his health needs is a field goal, and they've won the game. They give J.J. credit for two on the run. Second goal from the eight. We are in the bottom of the first overtime. Wheaton Warrenville South and Wheaton North tied at seven. Any score for the Tigers wins the game. Stebbins again under center. I formation. Toss play goes left side to Owen England. He gets drilled but spins forward down to around the five-yard line. Tackle made by Wheaton North's Dan Weber. Third and goal from the five for the Tigers. Looking really good for the Tigers right now, and if I were a Tiger fan, I'd be definitely really excited about that uh, move that Wheaton North did back on fourth down. They pull the ball back to the six-yard line. You've got to figure here, the Tigers will run the ball again, and I would think that they would probably try to run it more toward the middle of the field to try to make it a little bit more of a straight-on kick for Chan Vong to try to win this football game. And you got to think that is either going to be Chan Chan Johnson or Nick Howell. Stebbins, Stebbins goes into the shotgun here, has England on his left hip. Bad snap, ball loose! Wheaton North recovers! Wow, what a game. So a gaff by each team is going to lead to this game going to a second overtime. I, I can't wait to pick up, you know, like the Daily Herald tomorrow morning and look at this. Well, I was really surprised that they put Stebbins into the shotgun. I thought for sure he would simply turn and hand that ball to England and have him go up the middle and set up the game-winning field goal. And instead, out of the shotgun, Stebbins does not cleanly handle the snap. And we will go to a second overtime. This is men Un the game. Unbelievable. So now you switch. So now it will be Wheaton Warrenville South with the first possession. 
the top of the inning, as it were, and then Wheaton North will have the opportunity to answer. So now the Tiger offense that just had its first turnover of the ball game now has to get its head back on right and head right back out there. Muff stands here on jumping up and down, Channing. I believe that we will win. And if I were for any team here, I would think that I would just be, you know, like, what's going on? <laughs> I mean, two bonehead moves here. Well, again, I, you know, one's a physical mistake that Mike Stebbins makes on not handling that snap, but I still, as it stands, if, if that had gone as it had did, if Wheaton North had kicked the field goal, they win the game. I mean, I, I, it's just, I'm sure that there's a perfectly good explanation for it. I can't find it for you. And it looks like this time Wheaton North has the opportunity to decide which side of the field they want to play on. So they're going to go to the other end. And I think this is for two reasons. One, they want that scoreboard on their side. And two, this is the end where the student section is. And so I think they want every bit of advantage they can get with the student section, make it as much noise as they can when Wheaton North has the football. I think it's a pretty good move. I kind of like it. So we go from the south end to the north end for overtime number two. What a bizarre opening night for the 2015 football season. And you know, as a commentator, the fans at home may think I'm exaggerating, but this is probably going to be the best game of the year already. Overtime number two. First possession for... Wheaton South from the 10-yard line. First and goal. Backs in the I formation. Luke Foster, the junior, is the tail of the tandem. He'll get the handoff up the middle. Foster with a little bit of room. Falls forward down around the 6, maybe the 5-yard line. Andy Anderson makes the stop for North. And tell you what, big carries at a big time for Luke Foster, the junior. His first varsity action is J.J. Johnson still continues to struggle with cramps. Foster will come off here and Johnson back into the ballgame. Down to the five-yard line, a gain of five for Foster. As a second down and goal from the five. Tigers break the huddle, play clock under 10. Got to hurry. Stebbins going to go under center. England is the tailback. Johnson is the fullback. Howell the only receiver to the right. Toss play goes to England. Cuts it back inside the five, and it'll be chopped down around the three-yard line where it'll be third and goal. Oh, you get the sense. You never like, you know, you get feelings, right? You never know, but you get the sense that Wheaton Warrenville South really needs to score a touchdown here. And if they know, um, you know, like last last drive when we were down on the south side of the field, when South snapped the ball, I mean, both teams made moves that happened all game that were affecting them. No doubt. Wheaton Warrenville South calls time out here. And so a huge third and goal from the three to start the second overtime coming up here for Wheaton Warrenville South. 7-7, overtime number two. Along with producer engineer Craig Dent and Jay Scott Konetsky, I'm Chris Lake. Glad to have you along here on the NFHS Network. First of four games that we'll have for you from Wheaton Warrenville South this year. Our next contest will be the 8th of September when Nequa Valley comes to Wheaton Warrenville South. We'll be back with you again on the 9th of October when Matea Valley comes on homecoming. And then our last game of the year will be the final regular season game of the year as Naperville North will, will visit Wheaton Warrenville South. But still a lot of football here on opening night. 7-7. Each team scored on its first possession of the third quarter. In the first overtime, Wheaton North was lining up to kick what would be a go-ahead field goal in the top of the first overtime. And they tried a fake that failed. So all Wheaton Warrenville South had to do was kick a field goal to win. And on third down from inside the five, a fumbled snap out of the shotgun allowed Wheaton North to recover and have new life. So here we are in overtime number two. Third and goal from the three. Stebbins in the shotgun. Two receivers right, one to the left. Now he's in the backfield all by himself as England motions out. Stebbins, a long count. Takes the snap, drops back. He's going to pop fly the right side. The pass is tipped and incomplete. Like 
They're going to send on the kick team. It'll be Chan Vong, the 5'7", 125-pound senior, who will try to give Wheaton Warrenville South the lead here in the top of the second overtime. And hopefully they won't do the move that Norfolk did last time in the first overtime. Basically, this is an extra point. They're going to spot the ball right at the 10-yard line. The holder is the quarterback, Mike Stebbins. Vong, soccer, soccer style, style kicker, gets himself set. Snapback is good. The kick is up, and it is... Good! Wheat Warrenville South has the lead, 10-7. So a 20-yard field goal by Chan Vong has given Wheat Warrenville South its first lead of the game, 10-7 here in the second overtime. So now Wheaton North can win it with a touchdown. Send it to a third overtime with a field goal. Or if Wheaton Warrenville South's defense stops, the Tigers will win the ball game. And the, uh, one thing I want to talk about is how long it took them to construct this new scoreboard. They were working on this this afternoon. It's absolutely gorgeous. They did a great job. Falcons with the football at the 10. First and goal as we start the second overtime. Two receivers right, one to the left. Anthony in the shotgun. Sends a tight end across the formation from left to right. Looking to throw. Under pressure. Tipped. Almost intercepted. Incomplete as Will Bach got a hand on it. It'll be second down and 10. I don't know. If I were a Tiger fan, I don't know whether to be excited or scared. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what makes, makes sports fun, right? Is that yeah. feeling of kind of a little bit of both. Ball on the far side. Hash mark. Second down and 10. Some of the Tigers coaches here on the nearest sideline asking for some more noise from the fans. Gustafson and Graham go to the right. Torini on the left. He's going to come in motion across the formation. The ball's on the ground and hit Torini. Now it's loose and he's on the run. Trying to find some room and down he goes. Back outside the 15. Now I know that's how fans are excited and... Jamel Smith made the tackle on another mistake as Torini came in motion. It almost looked like the snap hit him. It went to the ground. If Wheat Warrenville South had recovered, the game would have been over. As it is, Torini was able to find the ball and at least try to move it forward. The ball now out to the 16-yard line where it's third and goal. Anthony in the shotgun. He's going to go under center for the first time tonight. Play fake, rolling to his right, under pressure, looking to throw. He pop flies it into the end zone, and it is incomplete. It is incomplete. So now Wheaton North will have to kick a field goal to try and tie the game. Excellent defense in the end zone. Looked like Paul Monaco, and we have a Falcon player down. It looks like it's Marcus Gustafson who was the intended receiver. Solomon Jackson was chasing down Luke Anthony from behind. Forced an early throw. Pop fly to the near side. There were three Tiger defenders surrounding Gustafson. He had no chance to make the catch. A little bit ginger as he gets up is Gustafson. He's to be favoring his right leg. All right, so here's the deal. The ball is out at the 16-yard line. Okay, so that botched play is huge because now this field goal is going to be a 33-yarder to try to tie the game. If this is made by Anthony Sawyer, we go to a third overtime. If he misses it, Wheat Warrenville South wins. Kabanko is the holder. It'll be a 33-yard attempt. The kick is up, and it is no good! No good! Tigers win! Tigers win! Wheaton Warrenville South in double overtime beats Wheaton North 10-7.
and it's Bedlam on the field at Red Grange Field as these Tiger seniors will go out with a win over their rivals. What an amazing game. Wheaton Warrenville South wins 10-7 in double overtime. Jan Vaughn's 20-yard field goal in the top of the second overtime wins it as the 33-yard attempt by Anthony Sawyer from Wheaton North is woefully missed. Well, this is one of those situations we talked about earlier. I would imagine that most every one of these kids knows the other as they've come up through the Wheaton Rams youth program. So. It's a little different handshake line than a lot of other games. There's a lot of familiar faces and a lot of old teammates, and uh, it's a little bit different, but I'll tell you right now, it's not going to make the celebration any less sweet for Wheat Warrenville South, as just like the Tiger team from a year ago, they find a way to win and eke one out 10-7 in double overtime as Anthony Sawyer just mishit that field goal. I mean, he did not. I don't think it was blocked. I mean, it looked like he just mishit it, and it was way short. And Wheaton Warrenville South escapes with a 10 7 win on opening night. Unbelievable. And you're already looking at where the South. Well, right now it is quite the celebration at around the 35-yard line on the south end of the field as the t final play members of the Tigers team make their way through the handshake line. And now everybody taking a knee as they'll listen to the coaches here. But this was something. I mean, I didn't know that we would get a whole lot weirder than the way last season finished up. A big overtime win here at Red Grange Field in that stretch of games at the end of the year. The incredible playoff win over Normal Community High where they just steamrolled the team that had been beating the tar out of everybody all year. He had the weird playoff game down at Providence Catholic. It was 2 nothing at halftime. I mean, just a really strange season, but it has not changed here to start 2015 as the Tigers pull off a 10-7 double overtime win over Wheaton North. I'm surprised that... I'm surprised the student section didn't find a way to get on the field tonight. But let's do a quick scoring summary in this one. The only scoring in regulation came in the third quarter, back-to-back. -back. First drive of the third quarter for Wheaton North culminated with an 18-yard touchdown pass from Luke Anthony to Marcus Gustafson. The PAT was good. Nine minutes left in the third quarter. It was 7-0 Wheaton North. Wheaton Warrenville South got the football on the ensuing kickoff and marched down the field. J.J. Johnson caps off the drive with a two-yard touchdown run. PAT good, 7-7. Seven, seven. Stays that way into overtime. In the first overtime, Wheaton North has a relatively short field goal to take the lead in the top of the first overtime. They try to fake. The play fails, and Wheaton Warrenville South takes over. The Tigers drive to around the five-yard line. They have a third down play. Mike Stebbins cannot handle a shotgun snap. Fumble is recovered by Wheaton North. Each team fails in the first overtime. We go to overtime number two. In the second OT, Wheaton South very methodically moves the ball down inside the five-yard line. They end up settling for a 20-yard Chan Vong field goal to take a three-point a three lead at 10-7. Wheaton North then has the football. They have a big play and a big mistake. Adam Torini in motion actually gets hit by the snap. The ball bounces all the way back to the 16-yard line. It's from the 16-yard line that they attempt the game-tying field goal, a 33-yarder by Anthony Sawyer, missed badly, and it was celebration time for Wheaton Warrenville South, a 10-7 win for the Tigers in double overtime. That is going to do it for our broadcast tonight. Next up for the Tigers, a road game at Lake Park next Friday. Our next game here on the NFHS Network will be the 18th of September as Neequa Valley, one of the new DVC members, will make a trip to Red Grange Field. We'll have that contest for you right here on the NFHS Network right around 7.30. That is going to do it for our broadcast tonight. I want to thank Craig Dent for an outstanding job of producing and engineering tonight's game. I want to thank Hopi Fulton, who ran the camera for the first half. And I absolutely want to thank J. Scott Konetsky, got it right finally, for doing a great job of not only running the camera but also providing color commentary in the second half. Great job, my friend, and uh, hopefully a start of a great season. Yeah, hopefully I'll home to be here next game too. Appreciate it. I'm Chris Lake. Another weird one for Wheat Warrenville South, but they come out on top. 10-7 the final. 
Tigers over Wheaton North in double overtime. That's going to do it for our broadcast tonight, so I thank everybody for listening and watching, and we will be back with you again on the 18th of September when Nequa Valley comes to Red Grange Field. So hopefully you enjoyed the broadcast. We know you enjoyed the result. Tigers win 10-7 over Wheaton North in double overtime. You've been listening to Wheaton-Warrenville South Football on the NFHS Network.